Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just communicate your gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. It is a product of your grace. It's a product of your mess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Express your gratitude to him. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands in one minute and truly thank Him. We are taking our time to thank Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are testimonies that you are a good God. Our lives are the proof that you are dependable. We thank you. Jabrakatu segete balakuzi na bakasi, shabradus keti parutu supla. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Good evening. Hallelujah. While while I sat back there, you know, I was just, let me tell you what was in my mind. I was just looking at us in, in my mind, truly, and in my spirit. And wondering what your life will become like when God is done with you. No, not just because of the testimonies. The testimonies are a token that a representation is proof to you that God is with you. But let me tell you, his commitment is more than these testimonies. The implication of his presence in your life is far bigger than this. This cannot be all why he's with you. And my joy is the knowledge. You see, vision, vision is the ability to see things the way it should be, not the way it is vision is the ability to see things that you can look at a weak brother a weak sister a weak gentleman a weak lady and you know the implication of what their lives will become on account of what they are receiving Brothers and sisters please listen it's not a mystery what we are becoming by the power of the word of god and by the ministry of his spirit is not a mystery it's not something we are trying to guess the picture is very clear god has a portrait god has an idea of what a believer should look like after a sufficient season of yieldedness your life should represent something and the bible gives us an idea of it psalm 112 he said blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighted greatly in his commands no matter how small that man is blessed is the man that can take the risk of reverence for god and delights in his command he says his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the righteous shall be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and that his righteousness endures forever and you begin to read and see that he, the desire his desire upon his enemies will come to pass the enemies will look at him and only gnash their teeth Listen, what God is making us become, let's trust him. You may not trust a preacher. You may not trust yourself, but trust God. Trust God. Because let me tell you, you see, when he's done with us, it will be to him all the glory. You will watch your life and say, my God. So this is what God can do. You get the glory. 
You'll get the praise. You'll take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You'll get the glory. You'll get the glory. You'll get the praise. You'll get the praise. You'll take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. So in my life, be glorified. Be glorified for your grace and your heart. say Lord my life will bring you glory forget about the mockers forget about what does not look like it yet in your life Lord find glory through my life my life will give you glory to bring you glory my life will bring you glory My life will bring you glory. I praise you. I praise you. Oh. I praise you. I praise you. One more time with faith in your heart. I praise you. I praise you.
Lord, we declare that forever you will be glorified in our lives. Forever you will be glorified in this house. This remains a place where you will be glorified. That men will continue to see your awe and your majesty in and through our lives. Thank you for making us signs and wonders. Epistles of your grace. Epistles of your majesty. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. For as long as you continue to embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, for as long as you continue to be childlike enough and allow his word to change you, I give you a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Your life will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. The system for the lifting of men in the kingdom will never change. It will never be uniquely constructed just because of you. What you think about it or don't think about it makes no difference. The way, you see, God does not align to our terms. No. We are the ones who will humble ourselves and align to his ways. Are we together? If at all God is merciful, he stretches his hands to bring you. Not that he stretches to leave his position. So the idea is not to invent your way. You don't seek God at his terms. It's pride. And let me tell you something. Please listen to me. Many preachers are getting it wrong. The way they are building people will frustrate them somewhere along the line is true now i i must confess to you it is difficult to build people holistically it is very difficult because our individual callings you see the way god works with men is that because of his call upon your life he tilts you towards a dimension of himself and you will have to focus in that area to gain mastery the side effect of that focus is that you will trivialize other areas are we together now if god has called me into the ministry of healing for instance chances are that because of my focus my staying in that area all the books i read all the conferences i go to will be along the healing ministry chances are that i will pay little attention to leadership and administration because it has not been captured in my experience with god that is the reason why the unity of the body is important. Because seeking God in that way has a side effect. But he created the unity of the body to give that balance. Now my refusal to align with the body will make me mentor people along a line. And very soon you will see a pattern of deficiency in a particular dimension. It was produced by we preachers. So I can, you can see people who are prosperous, powerful, but they have no regard for spiritual things. No regard, no intelligence, no nothing. Excellence, yes sir. Administration, yes sir. Leadership, yes sir. Prosperity, as much as we know financially speaking, yes sir. But their spirits are, it's unfortunate. The knowledge of God, zero. Passion for God, zero. Evangelism, zero. Conformity to the life and the character of Christ, zero. Every time you see a prevalent pattern within a people, the communicators, the shapers, the molders of their understanding are to be blamed. And so I admit to you as a man of God that it is difficult to build people holistically. It's very difficult very difficult because sometimes you will have to go out of your natural inclination with god to supply that balance but it is worth it if you love people 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Our passions are not only dependent on the Holy Spirit. They are also dependent on our age ranges. Please listen carefully. This is not what I'm teaching tonight. I just want to express something. A young man seeking God from between the ages of 10 to maybe 25 or 30 because of the, the reality that most likely a major part of that young man's life in terms of needs and all of that is being there is usually someone who is helping him out with his decisions with resources are we together so it is justifiable that that young man does not seem to see any need in developing his mind and trying to make sure that resources are available for instance a man of 35 to 50 has his passions altered because children have come into the equation their development has come into the equation there are responsibilities at this point the implication of your life and your decisions no longer affect you alone they affect society is that true they affect the faith of another person they affect the destinies of the young ones that you are raising biologically or otherwise and then a man who is from 50 upwards his passions his interest is also different so you have to be careful you have to look at these factors in opening your spirit to be mentored are you listening to what i'm saying if i listen to a man of 65 years or 70 years he has a lot to tell me in terms of experience and knowledge but the truth is that it will be unfair for my desire and interest and passions to be forced to resonate with him i will find out that that conformity will affect my growth process are you getting what i'm saying so when god calls a man god does not only give you a message god gives you an age range where your message and ministry becomes effective most preachers don't know this if i preach to elderly people now of say maybe 60 years to 80 years let me tell you the truth they are not going to be touched by my message they will only be impressed that the things they learned old i learned young at the end of that message they won't stand up and say my i couldn't sleep no there is nothing i would tell them that is worth lacking sleep the mistake has been made the lessons have been learned their focus is on pouring their lives to a younger generation please listen to me don't hate anybody but be careful who mentors you because you will be a reproduction of not only the mindset but the interests the perspectives is important the bible says david served his generation served his generation a man can be talking to you who has estates a man can be talking to you who has 30 branches as a pastor a man can be talking to you who has raised sons and daughters around the world and the truth is he does not really have any need a man can be talking to you from the perspective of his sabbath he has entered his sabbath experientially there are some things that he will not have the time to teach you are we together they will be focusing on maintaining certain levels not helping you get there because he has arrived there and chances are that when you learn from him you will only maintain your current level he's teaching you maintenance not growth are we together the way i teach and guide people 10 15 years ago i'm still a young man but it's not the same context are we together people are married now they have families their needs are shifting their needs are changing so a young man can have a fellowship where 99 percent of the people are unmarried 99 percent are students just got admission the context of his teaching his example his emphasis i don't expect that kind of person to be teaching on love and relationship and all of that no 
the the messages in that kind of cycle should be very finite god the holy spirit pressing into god are we together there's no issue of counseling over love and relationship I, I, it's on seriousness at that level because the the epicenter of their pursuit should be god to know him but a good leader not just a man of god must be able to bring relevant teachings that align with the transitory processes of people's lives otherwise a time will come where your message may be powerful but no longer relevant you see people only stay under you when they can see the applicability of your messages not the power that is dispensed from them you will be surprised that your message can become so powerful but the context of your communication no longer fits those people so you must learn are you getting blessed i don't want you to fail in life spiritually and otherwise so my assignment is not just to bring the word of god the power of the holy ghost my assignment is to be sensitive and to bring the teachings as we all transition together are we together so that children will not come and you find out that in everything you've learned about god there was no provision to grow spiritually while taking care of your family then you have to live your spiritual life to take care of your family because the preacher did not tell you in his teaching you you know god based on his teaching only if you don't have children but now when you have children there is no system of incorporating other things and the pursuit of god when he was teaching you how to know god you were probably a student who had all the time but right now you are not only a worker you are a supervisor and he's still giving you the template of someone who has eight hours free to love god are you seeing that now and that may no longer work and you will feel guilty that because you could not do the things you were doing before the way you are doing them based on his interpretation he will make you feel you are backsliding not knowing that every face has a strategy for remaining spiritual are you getting what i'm saying now if you don't learn this a day will come certain quality of people will never come to your church because your message does not capture god as presented to people within that frame of influence remember he told elijah eat for the journey is far by the time you become a managing director who may be in a country just for two months in a whole year the man of God must be able to bring a strategy for spiritual growth that will give you the same result as an idle student who has eight hours in his disposal. Otherwise, you will find out that you apply your, your eight hours with God every day formula and you find out that you are knowing God but your company is crashing. And then you say, Kai, what is all this? Then he will tell you, leave the company and focus on God then you focus on God and find out that something about your life is becoming ineffective. Many believers are afraid because the things they used to do, the transitions in their lives, no longer afford them all the time again. I never would have believed that my life would be this busy and this occupied. Time is gold for me. You see that? That means there must be a system of time redemption such that my spiritual life does not suffer and other things also will not suffer. Are you getting blessed? So we have people who know God but they are not blessed. We have people who get to a point and certain kinds of people cannot come to hear the word of God upon their lips. The reason is because they do not have an applicable message or a pattern that ministers Christ to them. Being a man of God is not just having power and the ability to speak. Hallelujah. I used to preach a lot faster than I do now. But 
I came to a point where I had to ask myself, what exactly is the purpose of preaching? What is the purpose of communication? And I found out that the purpose is understanding. It is terrible to have people sit under you for many years and really never understand you. You may be impressed by their shouting, Woo! and you will be so flattered. Let me tell you the truth with all humility. You see, there are levels when God brings you to every point that you are under pressure to prove has been proven. So settle down and build people. You see that? Yes. I will be a foolish person at this level of my life to be proving that the anointing of the Spirit is upon me. To be proving whether I have access to revelations or not. It's not pride. These realities have been proven. The thing to prove now is the hand of God by the lives you raise. Now you can go on to a secondary school or a campus and see a young guy under pressure for someone to shout under the anointing because at that level he's seeking for validation. So his pressure will be that the, if at the end of that meeting only two people fall, he can go back and lock the door for three days. Say, Lord, what happened? That's the reason why you see people like Papa Ia Deboe. They just come and say, the Lord bless you. And I mean, they are so not concerned whether you shout or not. They, they know what they are giving you. It's up to you to believe whether you have it or not. Someone can be falling in their presence and truly speaking, you see that they are not interested. The point has been proven. You can't keep proving a point forever. You must win yourself out of that childishness and focus on building people. My pride now, let me tell you this. At the level God has brought me by his grace, my pride is no longer my results. My pride is your results. If I celebrate my results now, tea and bread, Say, everybody, come and look. God gave me tea. It's a sign that I've failed. God has been fair enough to me. Now my own result is your result. Are you seeing that now? So my focus has shifted. It's not just on myself. God has helped me. God has tried for me. I will be wicked to still think about myself. I don't go to preach and wondering, will they give me an honorarium? And if yes, how much will it be? No, no. My heart, God sees, is that, Lord, you have helped me. You have granted me understanding. Now, Lord, let your word prevail over your people. You see that? So that from nowhere, a young man rises with a strange level of grace. A family is able to capture dimensions of God that they can reveal you are finding purpose you are finding your place in life you are causing and stirring revivals across territories this for me is my joy a time must come fatherhood is not all about growing old it's all about pouring yourself into people and witnessing with all humility the consistency of the truths of god the truths of the kingdom that make men great are finite. You can know them. It is the pursuit of God that is infinite. Are you getting what I'm saying? The, the keys that you need to piece together, like you can get to a final year and your lecturer says you are finished. You say, I finished what? You say, you finished the course. It doesn't mean you have finished learning, but you have safely exhausted all that it takes to be awarded a certificate. That can happen in the spirit. That you can learn the things you need to know about certain things. And God says now your message is clear. Your priority, what keeps you fresh now is not just new revelations but the freshness of his presence. That's why in old age you will still be fat and flourishing because you are planted. Are we together? When you listen to Papa Deboe or you listen to Benny Hinn and they talk, the truth is that most of what they say will not necessarily be new to you. But why do you receive it? It comes with a freshness that 45 years of ministry has not eroded. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. 
God sees my heart. I detest a ministry where only the man of God or the man of God and a few people they are the ones who are prayer warriors. They are the ones who are loving God. They are the ones who are conforming into his character. And then there is a, there are the masses of followers as we call them. Broke, weak, don't know God. And for many years, they remain loyal to that anointing. It's not God's way of doing things. Three years was enough for Jesus to build certain people. And after that, like the foxes of Samson, he released them. He said, guys, I know you want me to stay, but it is expedient that I go. Because it's time for you to be on the stage too. And did they succeed? They turned the world upside down. I look at a few people who God is helping. God is helping all of us. But I look at us and our spiritual results. I look at our financial results. I look at our results of influence and all and I'm telling you, my heart is gladdened. I know. I remain committed to helping you become something that you may not understand now or appreciate. But at the end of your life, I still say it again. You will stand back and watch yourself and say, God, so this is where you are going to take me to. Hallelujah. Pray in one minute. Say, Lord, where I have not been attentive to you, take away my pride. Take away that pride. Give me the grace. My son, pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart it says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh Within me rise. Let that entrepreneur within me rise. Let that Deborah, let that Milka, let that Hannah, Rachel within me rise. This is why I am here. Let that man of kingdom influence within me rise. It is for your glory. It is for your kingdom. An heir as long as is a child differeth not from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Lord, I will listen. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to teach us briefly, just very briefly, just to prepare the ground for the seven days. By the way, please, I don't want you to miss any of these days. I'm, my heart is already excited because of what God is going to be doing. Your life will so change it to surprise you. We're going to be sharing mysteries and we're going to be praying one mystery per day that you handle and it just sets you on fire and we'll pray we're going to have a time of intense prayer praying in the spirit repositioning yourself times of encounters times of restoration of mantles of graces times of opening of new spiritual dimensions yes the prophetic is there but needs to be enlarged. The apostolic is there but needs to be enlarged. It's true that the healing ministry is there but it needs to be enlarged. Capacity. Please don't miss it. This is not some activity of men. No. Seven o'clock you are here. 
no matter how long it takes to start just be here anywhere if you there is no space somewhere this is not a koinonia program this is a visitation that god is bringing to the land it will be a time of strange miracles few hours but the impact will linger upon your spirit make sure you fast please fast let the little children fast give them a little time they may not be able to fast six to six but except you are pregnant or under medical supervision then that that's all right but even at that doesn't mean you just eat anything anyhow are we together let your spirit be alive please off off useless movies films just suspend it for a while i beg you they don't have to be wrong all these social media distractions minimize it focus on god focus on god let what will play from your phone and your screens be worshiped give god one week and let him expand you you can't put new wine in an old wine skin so let god replace the wine skin so that it can take something heavier for the seasons that are coming hallelujah the protocol department will make arrangements. We'll try to see how the buses will be available at least to bring in people and we'll try to finish on time. But it's going to be seven days of fire in this place. Seven days of the strange move of the spirit. Epochal revelations of the truth of God's word that if and when you handle them will turn your life around. Hallelujah. Don't come alone. Invite someone. Years ago, when I went for an Arbonke crusade, there was no seat. I stood there for six hours. Six solid hours. Because I was hungry. When you are hungry, you don't even see the color of the cloth of your neighbor. Your eyes are fixed. He said, if your eye be single, your heart will be full of life. Don't just come to hear, come to see. You can argue with what you hear, but you cannot argue with what you see. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. The Lord is saying, but my eyes are seeing. It is what you see that you get, not just what you hear. The Lord put a strong burden in my heart this night. Just a few minutes. Let's talk about it. The spirit of wisdom. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing. I will see of the wonders of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. James chapter 1, verse 5. Forever sing your praise. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom. So the Bible tells us it is possible that a man can lack wisdom. It does not stop him from being a human being. It is possible to live without the wisdom of God at work in you. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom. The question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom because you only ask when you don't have it but how do i know that i do not have wisdom because remember the bible says every man is right in his own eyes so based on what parameter what parameter do i use to arrive at the conclusion that i am bankrupt of wisdom there is nobody I know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise. Is that true? You try telling somebody who considers himself a gentleman 
and say, I don't think you are exactly wise. And you think the person will laugh at you and say, wow, I'm just learning that. No, you're going to have a big problem. The person says, not wise? Me? Am I a madman? Do I look like one? But the Bible says, if any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom. So the first assignment is not to ask. The first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of God, that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life? Are we together now? There must be a system in the kingdom that God has provided to help men understand. So I can come to the conclusion because you see, as human beings, it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives. Especially for believers. We are people of faith. And sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives is not natural for men to admit. Are we together now? Yes. When you tell someone he can't cook, say, no, 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 I can't cook. What are you? I mean, this is it. You are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable. And the person is saying, I can cook. Because in his eyes, this is a wonderful meal. Are we together? You are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart. And you are saying, no, no, no. You are not dressing smart. Say, no, no, no. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very, very okay. So it is difficult. I'm explaining to you this, this, if any man lack wisdom, it's a very deep process to arrive at a point. Let me tell you, realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of God. The arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission. We can secretly desire to be wiser we can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in but to outspokenly admit no it's very uncomfortable are we together but the bible says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask who let him ask of god that give it unto how many men so the manifestation of the wisdom of god in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people it's not privy to apostles and prophets no the giving of this operation of the spirit is given to all men he says he does so liberally and then an upbraided not and it shall be given that means if I look at your life and I do not see wisdom, I am safe to conclude at certain things. Number one, that you have not received. And you receive not because you have not asked. And you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life. Are you seeing that now? That means if you look at my life and your life, and I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of men that comes to naught, the wisdom of God if it is not in my life the Bible says if I ask it should be given so if it is not in my life and God is benevolent it means that I have not genuinely asked and I have not asked because I have not seen the need and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped that means something about my understanding. I have indoctrinated myself into believing that I have sufficient wisdom. Let me tell you the formula that the Bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not. Wisdom is very vocal. The Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. There are fruits in your life and my life that validate the presence of wisdom. There has to be fruits in your life and my life. There are things I cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not. I leave that to God. Wisdom is not part of those. Because if the wisdom of God is functioning in the life of an individual, it is justified by the results children there talks of the results 
the proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom so how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of God and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work very simple look at your results look at your life unbiasedly look at your life unashamedly and then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm, the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of God in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you the spirit of God is at work in you but that dimension of wisdom may not be at work in you are you blessed lack of the wisdom of God is what is responsible for the anxiety of men you know what it means to be anxious worrisome the fear that plagues people you will always fear until you know what to do and he himself knew what he ought to do the Bible took out time to talk about anxiety Philippians chapter 4 and when you read from verse 6 to 7 it says be anxious for nothing please give it to us let's let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom it says be the word careful there does not just mean be careless it means be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer we see prayer again you leave that we're going to touch that later but it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God there is an information that can take away anxiety anxiety let me tell you something it's not proof that Satan is around you it's proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life it's an uncomfortable truth we must admit our world is full of people dying of anxiety where will this come from where will I mean what, no no the pain and fear Jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance it says yet your father yet not Solomon arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel is like one of these anxiety is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work anxiety stems from uncertainty there is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives financially speaking spiritually speaking so you are about to um, do certain things embark on your life's journey and then because of the gaps of uncertainty you find out that there is worry and anxiety unbelief comes in fear comes in because of fear you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail so you become possessive self-centered angry and all these other elements come in I found a very interesting scripture we're going to read it and then I'll define for you what wisdom is Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 are we there read it please one to read ah uh ah -uh. one to read thou through their, thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me next verse I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation the last verse I understand more than the ancient stop stop don't rush it I understand more than my enemies you made me wiser than my enemies you made me wiser than my teachers and you made me wiser 
than the ancient and there is a key we're coming there are we together it says thou by thy commandments by thy laws ah, you have made me wiser wiser than my enemies so i can rise wiser than my teachers wiser than the ancient because i have kept your secret psalms 104 verse 24 psalm 104 verse 24 oh lord how manifold are thy works everybody say results i want you to read it just the first line but change works with results ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy results how did the results come about in wisdom thou hast made them all lord i look at your life and is full of mighty works results and the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are god it is by engaging wisdom wisdom that these possibilities have been made manifest and the earth is full of your riches which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom there is a relationship between results and wisdom there is a relationship between riches and wisdom how manifold how multifaceted how awe-inspiring are your works what is wisdom i put a definition here wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately what is wisdom knowing what to do and doing it wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it if there is no doing it is not wisdom wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it possessing the scriptural solution there are many solutions there are many ways that seem it right unto a man but the end thereof will justify what way he took so scriptural solutions to life's challenges and then having the possession of those solutions you engage them appropriately you are wise if you do that are we together so you have wisdom to the degree to which we see you preferring scriptural solutions to the challenges that are around your life and others and the results that they produce many people listen to me do not possess this quality and there is an operation of the spirit that can make men to have this quality lavishly that regardless of your age listen carefully regardless of your educational background regardless of what your level of orientation that you can be um you can have a an influence of this dimension of the holy spirit at work in your life and all of a sudden your life opens up wonder after wonder a comprehension of the scriptural solutions listen to me if i ask everyone now write your prayer request and bring it here right now there are people who are going to ask for pages not pieces of papers every one thing that you are writing is in need of an answer is that true the bible says the spirit of wisdom is able to route you in a way and manner that you possess the keys that it takes to turn that request 
into your testimony and then the fortitude to engage the laws you now know until the results become evident in your life is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 to 9. Proverbs chapter 4. Please don't trivialize what I'm teaching you tonight. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's using a business terminology now. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8. Exalt her. Personifies wisdom now. Exalt her like you would do a lady you love. Exalt her. Is that true? Like you see a man treat his wife that he so loves. He says, exalt her and there is a reward for exalting her. Prize her above all else and she shall do what? What is responsible for promotion? It is true that God is the lifter of men. But the dimension of him that lifts men is his wisdom. Meaning if you are in a position for a long time. It's not just an attack from hell. But it's a sign that the spirit of wisdom is not at work. The spirit of wisdom creates motion in your life. It not only creates motion, it creates an upgrade to your life. It is because of the presence of this possibility that the Bible says the path of the just is like the shining light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. Now listen. Ah. It says she shall bring thee to honor. It didn't say she shall bring thee honor. Honor is here. It's not just, a, it's not just an attribute. It's a realm of existence. That wisdom can like an usher say follow me. I will lead you somewhere. Regardless of your background. As a preacher. As a businessman. As a mother. A father. Wisdom can usher you. And whilst you follow her foolishly. You will get into a realm. The name of that realm is honor. Not an event. It is how you live. Honor. That wisdom can bring a man to honor. When thou dost embrace her. Are we together? Like Ruth held on to Naomi, I'm not leaving you. I have seen the value of your presence in my life. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. This is what people are looking for. They are looking for promotion. In the spirit, they are looking for promotion in finances, promotion in influence. Men of God are struggling, trusting God, increase in membership, increase in whatever. This is the formula God gives us and we ignore him and then we keep searching around. Verse 9, this is what the Bible says. She shall give to thy head, hallelujah, an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver who is the she here wisdom wisdom that for embracing wisdom it can veto your background it can veto any other thing in your life brothers and sisters and bring you to this possibility this is the realm that we all desire to get there and the bible tells you that the way to get there is wisdom Are we together? Yes. The Bible says through wisdom a house is built. A house is built. Not through desire. Through desire the intention to build is there. But the actual building is through wisdom. This ministry brothers and sisters you see was built and is being maintained by wisdom. Every great man and woman you acknowledge around the world Every great enterprise that you see and admire Everyone who has come to a position of influence in the kingdom Has done so By the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom Years ago I was listening to Pat Robertson The founder of CBN 700 Club And he said as a young man When he was about to start ministry 
he said he went to the lord he said lord i'm a young man about to start give me three things number one he said give me wisdom number two he said give me favor number three he said give me the anointing of the spirit ah, i went back to god too and i said lord thank god i'm still young number one give me wisdom boy i stayed there before moving to favor because i knew that that wisdom I, I, my life was so bankrupt of it how else would i have gotten it our society is full of unwise people it's not an insult it's a description they are sincere people but their decisions and their results are very clear that the wisdom of god of god not sophia not human wisdom we're talking of a dimension of wisdom here that has nothing to do with age and not necessarily education and all of that the wisdom of god the faculty to produce result as god at god's level the spirit of wisdom deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 the reason why joshua excelled was not just that he was anointed joshua always had the anointing the anointing was there but the bible says and joshua the son of Nun, was full of what the spirit of wisdom he was already full of the spirit and yet Moses was told to lay hands on him. How do you lay hands on someone who is already filled with the spirit? And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Not full of wisdom. Full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Joshua, full of the spirit of wisdom. Joshua, full of the spirit of wisdom. No wonder when Moses died, there was nothing much for God to tell him again. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Joshua, my only encouragement is for you to be strong. You already have the spirit of wisdom. Mm. You have it. Just be strong. You are a young man. And I know that leading these people is difficult, but there is a spirit in you. You will lead them in a way that will make you a wonder. Leadership is by the spirit of wisdom. Let me tell you this. Listen. Any man on earth. Listen to me carefully. Any man on earth. And in the kingdom. That multitudes are listening to him. Respect him. Human beings are not stupid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can have a crowd of foolish people. But there is a level. To which there is there is a level to which human beings will not be more foolish than that jesus went up the mountain and a crowd followed him there was something he was telling them there was something contained in his teachings i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise not knowledgeable hidden is a principle that can bring solutions to your pain. Ah. There are families that if they knew this, weeping will stop. It's true. There are individuals that if they know this, weeping will stop. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. The book can be opened when the book is open then tears i look at times in my life when i was so bankrupt of certain dimensions of wisdom and i looked at the tears that came from my eyes but no more his wisdom has come hmm. i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise and for preachers we need this so much you know most times we don't start ministry with wisdom we start ministry with passion passion and then 
your passion leads you to spiritual activities that bring certain dimensions of the anointing and then while the ministry starts going at a point you hook in one place still anointed but wisdom you can't move further because the promoter is wisdom the exalter is wisdom the one who brings you to the realm of honor is wisdom herein lies the answer to the dilemma we see that gifted people still don't rise because to be gifted and to be wise are two different things you can be full of so much anointing and yet live an unrewarded life and yet not be able to rise in the spirit but god is changing someone's story in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i have watched people do you know um sometimes i sit down and i look at people truly speaking when i look at people i fight tears because i know what they are doing wrong i don't fight tears because of their situation i know i fight tears because i can explain why their lives are that way i have seen well-meaning lovely men and women of god that i love and honor with all my heart but i look at their lives the same way my life was and i know where they are missing it please no result is a mistake please learn this you may not understand what is being engaged but there is something being engaged to produce that outcome you may not understand what is being engaged but there is something being engaged a man does not just become powerful no no a man does not just last in ministry a man does not just become anointed brothers and sisters please listen to me the fact that you don't know what is being done does not mean something is not being done your miracle is when the solution comes and when the grace to apply it is released then you know that challenge has come to an end Isaiah 11 tells us there is a real spirit of wisdom, verse 2. That the Holy Spirit can manifest in a man as wisdom. Notice that even for the building of the tabernacle and in the Lord's house, God did not allow people to be involved carelessly. The spirit of wisdom had to come upon them to produce God's desired results. If the spirit of wisdom comes upon your ministry, your ministry will change in a way not just from human terms you will find out that the possibilities that only God can produce is what happens in your life years ago I'm not a social media person but the Lord spoke to me revealing the strategy for the next level of ministry and this is what the Lord told me I said Lord how will your word get to people and all of that yes we're going to have a tv ministry but that's for another time but how is it going to happen and this is what the lord told me at that time they sell messages you don't upload messages online and the lord said this is the strategy don't sell any message let the messages be packaged and put it online i will give it wings to the ends of the earth the wisdom of god it never made sense then what is this who has the time to download heavy mbs of an audio not video people are not, i mean when somebody can buy a cd and slot it who do you think you are but when his wisdom comes in something that looks so foolish go around jericho seven times just go around it has never been done oh god just go around and at the seventh time that act of wisdom crashes down Jericho. Brothers and sisters, that one act till today, this ministry will never recover from it. That one act in obedience to the spirit of wisdom. That's it. Mm. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. The spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for being able to afford the bills of ministry please hear me 
there is no ministry except you want to manipulate people don't be angry at men of god that you see manipulating people for let me tell you you are doing ministry and you want to work in financial integrity and still work in financial abundance you've got to receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom otherwise it will wear your grace out you will cry one day to death wisdom you need it in your life there are many christian homes that is very clear the spirit of wisdom is not there the decisions are always leading to pain the decisions are always leading to retrogression remember i told you that wisdom is justified by her children so if i claim the spirit of wisdom is in my life and everything i do is moving me back i should check something is wrong something is wrong there are men of god who are going back and back and back there are individuals going back they are better yesterday than they are today no matter what kind of prayer you pray for them i've seen individuals that i didn't see for a long time and you look at them and their lives are a tragedy they are still serving the lord that's the painful part they never they, they didn't backslide still passionate and you say why is your life like this are these your children yes sir why are they like this man of god god is faithful no sir don't 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 that does not look like faithfulness is god challenging us some of our parents are pastors they've been pastors for many years i'm not talking about finances no growth there is no day that the ministry breaks through that you can say sinners have been saved lives have been transformed pain after pain let me tell you repetition of pain is a sign that you need the spirit of wisdom it is the principal thing the bible says it is the principal thing there are ministries that rise and fall they rise to a level they are doing so well and then at a point you find out that things start to nose dive no scandal no nothing just they have exhausted the level of wisdom that can take them beyond that level and they come down the scriptural solution to life's problem and the fortitude to engage it appropriately is called wisdom standing let me use someone come come show standing between this gentleman and his destiny whether it is spiritually speaking whether it is financially speaking the obstacle other forces are there like favor and the rest but it is wisdom that tells you what to do for other forces you know why the bible says it is the principal thing because all other forces depend on it it is when you engage the truths that are received from heaven that other forces now start coming into play the anointing this and that it is wisdom that shows you what to do for the anointing to be multiplied in your life it is wisdom that tells you what to do for favor to be activated it is wisdom that tells you what to do for restoration to come all other manifestations are dependent on wisdom so in the interim there are many other forces but the principal force wisdom are we together so i do not i know that i should get there i know that if favor comes i will arrive there i know that there is a way i can be healed i know that there is a way the prophetic gift can be multiplied but what is that way what is that way and how do i engage it it is the spirit of wisdom that has brought forth these seven days of divine visitation because there is something that you can engage that will bring other things and then the spirit of wisdom comes i can show you a man that is carrying the spirit of wisdom his results her results it is true wisdom is justified by her children if you accept this thing tonight then we can finish up that verse if any of you lack results if any of you lack results if you lack results you lack wisdom if any of you lack results if your spiritual life lacks potency 
if your finances lack potency if your influence and your leadership and whatever it is that you're involved in lacks potency no promotion no growth nobody desires your grace you are living an unrewarded life spiritually and otherwise it says that if you lack this it's a sign that the wisdom of god is not at work in you hallelujah let me share with you very briefly how the spirit of wisdom works this is the core of what i'm teaching tonight most people are aware we've taught several teachings on the holy spirit and we've taught on wisdom you can make reference to my teaching what wisdom is this but the operation how it works is where i think that most people have not been able to access it mm. how is the spirit of wisdom how does it operate how do i activate the spirit of wisdom so that it produces for me ready let's finish up the scripture james chapter 1 and verse 5 james chapter 1 verse 5 there is wisdom in the name of jesus there is wisdom in the name Jesus if if any one of you lack results which is a product of lack of wisdom what's the first thing let him ask you have not because you ask not not because God is unable to give it let him ask let him ask let him pray let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when I begin to pray my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom but also activates its operation if prayer can bring wisdom then prayer can make it work too are we together now? yes let him pray I can know a man functioning under the influence of the Spirit of God by the results that come from his prayer. Not just his prayer. I need to see the results that come from your prayer. The reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time, people have concluded that prayer does not work. They cannot see the results from it. Do you know that praying in the Spirit capture something the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god that the princes of this world did not know it says for if they had known this they would not crucify the lord of glory there was something paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom not just bringing the anointing in your life the functionality the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray while they prayed they didn't know what to do how do we advance the gospel across this territory they prayed and they fasted and the spirit of wisdom came separate me paul and barnabas this is a strategy they stood before jericho listen when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you you will never fear when you see challenges all you need to know is to wait till the answer come many of us never wait we go ahead and say let the answer follow me and we call it faith and it damages us into pieces may never live to have a second chance when joshua got before jericho the bible says the fence of jericho could host five chariots fortified tooth and nail to a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence the fence of jericho was like cgc how do you penetrate the place do you shoot is it an arrow is it a gun do you jump the spirit of wisdom he said don't worry they circumcised themselves and set their heart apart and 
an angel just came and revealed a strategy do this do that and the lord spoke the spirit of wisdom go around the city seven times and on the seventh day go around seven times the spirit of wisdom many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy yes but what was uttered is the wisdom of god go and bath seven times go and bath seven times it is the solution not to all problems to your problem meaning someone else will do it not directed by god and not get any solution you see that the spirit of wisdom is god's customized solution for your challenges it's not generic is personal that's why i said it is not it is not the wisdom of the world the wisdom of the world is is universal in application like you say if someone is hungry eat god can tell you if you are hungry dance now that does not make sense but that is his solution for you go and bath seven times and the guy felt insulted Abba. I'm a captain of the Syrian army and he went to bath the seventh time the Bible says his skin became fresh you see let me tell you this is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense and still getting results they are not making sense is that they are doing it as directed the spirit of wisdom came whatever he tells you to do do it this is the fountain of wisdom Mary knew she did they would have said ah Jesus look 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 the the person who sells this wine is here he can tell you Jews were not foolish people they knew how to crush wine for kings whatever he tells you do notice that no single miracle of Jesus was repeated twice the results were repeated many times but the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue at a certain time he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes at a certain time he did something else look at him but we keep repeating the same thing and we just faith comes by hearing hearing what the wisdom of god when his wisdom comes to you then you get up and do what he told you to do then your life becomes a wonder Lord, where are we going to get the venue for this meeting? I saw in my visions overflow. Lord, I can't active your venue. I can use my brain to look at several venues. Which venue in Zaria will contain the crowd you are showing me? Just keep praying. Shagabakatakatabata. CGC, the spirit of wisdom. See that? As at the time the Lord spoke, the building had not even been expanded. This, when the spirit of wisdom speaks, don't doubt. You can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the Holy Spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know. No. Wisdom is manifested in prayer. When we pray, the spirit of wisdom begins to speak. Learn this. Most of us, we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom. Lord, what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life? And the Lord says, pray. And we pray after five minutes. Say, God, you are not speaking. Please, good night. And we just, we cheat ourselves there. You don't pray as long as you want. You pray till the answer comes. It's not the issue of 10 minutes or one hour. It is when it comes. There is an object to your prayer. And you begin to pray. When, when, when CGC became full and the overflows became full it was obvious that when there was a program here there was no other venue that could take us Lord what is going to be the way out of this when you know this you know that there's nothing called impossible impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of God when the wisdom of God comes it will turn a mountain I tell you into a level plain ground is God speaking to you hmm. 
and all of a sudden I was praying one time and the Lord said because of this every time Friday night is not available Sunday night will be available as simple as it is that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things Lord the overflows are full now to the roadside what do we do next by his wisdom God was able to prefer solution and we're able to host people overflow three is bigger than overflow one two and three and I mean overflow one and two together the wisdom of God you see you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way then you look and say ah, why didn't I think about it because your small brain cannot think about it my brother you need the wisdom of God Joseph after he finished interpreting the dream, then the spirit of wisdom came. Hear the spirit of wisdom speaking. Let Pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that. When there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing Moses. Moses could not do his work because there were so many people. And God told him, Mr. Man, you are going to kill yourself. Let the spirit of wisdom guide you. Set men thousands and hundreds and fifties and then appoint elders to take care of them then you just play supervisory roles ah, and Moses found rest he would have died and said it's the will of God how many pastors die because they love God but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs by the grace of God, one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by his wisdom we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer. I don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say, ah, I hope these people did their duty. Through wisdom, a house is built. Is God speaking to us? Everybody say prayer. Shout it, prayer. That means if the devil attacks your prayer life, what is he attacking? He's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you. When you set yourself apart to pray and the devil said it does not matter, among other things, he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of God. Say, I will pray. Shout it. Say, I will pray. Men who pray access the wisdom of God they come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions very very strange solutions sometimes solutions that don't make sense do not do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer when you say we have come to our wit's end then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom number two how is wisdom activated Wisdom is activated through meditation. Meditation. Noisy people, sorry for you. This is where the devil cheats us. We live in a noisy society. If you are not making noise, your phone is making noise. If your phone is not making noise, the television is making noise. If the television is not making noise, the well-wishers around your house are making noise. Our lives are full of noise that cheats us. There is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring. Meditation. Great leaders meditate. You sit down. Thank you. There's got to be a way out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you sit quietly. Do you know sometimes I do this from morning till night. Meditating like a fool. Sometimes I just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down. I'm waiting waiting and the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night the spirit of wisdom comes majestically doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly if you don't have patience forget about it because you will not come sometimes you finish all of those things you are praying in the night you just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven and you sit down this is it this is it It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Is the wisdom of God working in your life? 
Oh, I fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom. Do you meditate? No, sir. Then the spirit of wisdom may be there, but you're not aligning sufficiently. That's why many men of God don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half. The year is not halfway gone. And you wonder, what do I do? Inspiration comes in the place of meditation. Never forget. What does it mean to meditate? To ponder. Ponder. Not just on anything. To ponder on truth. Ponder on the word of God. Not just to mutter, but to ponder, to think. It's called imagination. It's not like imagination. It is called imagination. The creation of images by the spirit. Ah. Genesis 11. Before Nimrod began to build, he called the people and they began to meditate. Meditation is not just sitting down under a tree. That's a wonderful, um, um, what they call it, a wonderful way of stimulating meditation. But meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create. Creativity is a product of meditation. Let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works. The spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit. It's the first dimension of the Holy Spirit we see in Genesis chapter 1 creation the spirit of wisdom creates it creates solutions see what i'm teaching you is 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 a jackpot to your success in life if you understand it creation the solution to every problem you seek already exists in christ but there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit it is called creation it is called the power of imagination where you give the Holy Spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it. That's what happens in meditation. You offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed. That's what happens. Many of us are not creators. Creation is not just by speaking. It is out of the abundance of the heart. When that incubation has happened, then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest. Not many people will teach you this thing I'm teaching you. The spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works. Watch Jesus. This woman was caught in adultery. The very act of it this is a kind of question where both yes and no would chain you. And Jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom. Immediately the spirit of wisdom landed. Then he spoke. He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. And then the Bible says his speech affected the oldest first. You see, you see how powerful wisdom is? Because the youngest can drop it and the oldest will say, are you, are you stupid? Pick that stone. Then he started with the oldest. If the oldest has dropped the stone, what do you do as the youngest? The miracle is not in dropping the stone. It's who dropped it first. The oldest dropped it down to the last person. Woman, where are your accusers? Go. Neither do I condemn you. This is the spirit of wisdom. It is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men. Mm. That instead of everybody dying, let's make a caricature out of Satan. It's called the hidden wisdom. Let one man come and let the whole world enter in him. Then let him die. So that one man came and Satan kept looking for him. At a point, the Holy Ghost restrained his hand and Satan began to prevail. And Satan manipulated men to kill Jesus. And he ran to hell. He said, demons, did you watch what happened? I can't believe it. I killed Jesus. And to his shock, he saw Jesus in hell. And he said, no, this is a joke. You can't be in hell. Say, yes, I'm here. Because when you kill sinners, they go to hell. And so I died sin. And here I am in hell. Give me the keys. <sighs> Give me the keys. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. 
and when the keys were given to him he dislodged principalities and powers made a public show of them and then he not only resurrected he resurrected with many who had died they were in the streets of jerusalem everybody saw him and he said guys this is it you will um you will go to heaven but i have to be the firstborn among the resurrected so let me go to heaven quickly i'll come back and then you guys will go and he went to heaven poured his blood according to hebrews in the tabernacle became the high priest and then he returned the guys went and he went to the disciples all hail i'm back all power in heaven he disarmed satan not through power through wisdom are we together listen let me teach you something i walk in the anointing many results are not dependent on power force wisdom is really what brings dominion because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm you engage through knowledge not just by trying to force things it's the ministry of the angels to do that they are the enforcers of the word of god they confirm the word of the servant but wisdom is solution. That's why sometimes you see me ministering to people and you see me doing stupid things. I can hold somebody's hand and the Holy Spirit can say, let that person shout Jesus. And the person just shout Jesus and then the person is falling. And you are watching, me too, I'm watching. I'm as shocked as you. We are all watching the wisdom of the Spirit. You will now get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout Jesus and the person shouts and looks at you say I've done it say do it again because it was just copying this is one of the big mistake of we young ministers we copy acts without the spirit that brought them are we together yes meditation this is where many of us have missed it that you sit before the Lord. What's that song? Brooding over every darkness. You are called. Listen. Light to shine from dark. How can light come out of darkness? That's what the Bible says. It said God who has commanded light to come out of darkness. That means the answer is right there with you. In your chaos, the light. The raw material sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen when you plant corn the ugliness of the soil and it is still where the new shoot comes out of it's a principle he's brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine in darkness you are brooding, brooding over all my darkness. You are causing light to shine from dark. So in the midst of that financial hardship, sit down there. That's when creation happens. You're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere. Sit in it. By the rivers of Babylon, in the midst of the captivity, I sat down there and a vision was opened to me. We run away from challenges. The miracle is right there. Sit down. There's got to be a way. Lord, my wife, no, I prayed on, there's got to be a way. And all of a sudden, you allow him to impregnate your mind. Ah. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you this. Your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this. It will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding. Many of us don't sit down. Jobless people don't sit down to allow creation happen. They just loiter around. Sir, can you give me a job? And God is saying, I want to speak to you. No, God. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to marry. They said I, I can't marry because I don't have a job. Me, I want to. And God says, sit down now. If we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down, not worrying, just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down. When other people are snoring their destinies, you sit quietly. There's got to be a way to my life. Lord, everything is not working. Nine prayer requests since last year, nine of them not answered. You are not a liar. Jesus, 
speak to me and you are just playing you know i told i get who did i give an assignment was it us or school of ministry students you know sometimes i don't know the difference but do it still do it go and play worship you don't just sit down and beds are just making noise worship doesn't distract you it steals your spirit and then you sit down sometimes for hours the flesh will never allow you sit down this flesh you see once you sit down you just start thinking ah oh, but that lady is really beautiful you see don't stop still sit down there okay, but my father do you know to be honest do you know that i didn't have a good upbringing don't worry this is the flesh trying to distract something a time will come your flesh will be frustrated it will give up it's one of the benefits of fasting the flesh is empowered by the health of your body it takes advantage of food so when when food is minimal it it alters the interruption of the flesh yes sir it does ultimately leading to boosting your faith but that's how it works and you sit down lord there has to be a way and the lord sits down and says but you know you have hundred thousand and then a scripture just opens up and now this is god the spirit of wisdom coming to you now and looks at it and says except a corn falls in the ground and the lord can speak to you and say that hundred thousand that is your last money i'm not saying do it go and sow it you are not doing donation just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die and sow it somewhere the moment you do that the same spirit that spoke to you now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to walk in you sometimes he will close the door of any physical helper in your life pain is a very good way of activating wisdom some of us until you go through certain levels of pain wisdom will never work in your life it's not all pain that is demonic hear what i'm telling you you always receive hundred hundred thousand from your father so every time you are saying the wisdom of god you say yes but what you are mean is the money is coming and then your father says well um I had a dream and I didn't see myself giving you money for five months. Say, so what are you saying? Say, exactly that. Um, a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that I got rich that you are benefiting from. The same voice said I should leave you alone. You may insult and get angry, but after two weeks, you sit down and in your anger, you frown, you frown, you frown, and then you just open a scripture anyhow. Lord, help me. And then you just see. Takes you to the story of the widow in Zarephath. What did she do? You have been reading it because your stomach is full. Now you read it with your stomach empty. Then shall thy light break forth. And you see something you never saw. Ah! God commanded a woman. But she was not aware she was commanded. But the Bible says God already commanded her. Could it, could it be that there was something she was not receiving? Because God told Elijah, I've commanded her. Whether she, the, the message arrived to her or not, is another thing. But me, I've commanded her. But when Elijah arrived, it didn't look like she was aware. I expect her to say, oh, you are the one. You're welcome. Come in. I mean, the loaf is there. The man said, I'm about to die. She would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet. The same way God would say, I've answered this person. And you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there. I meditate a lot. Creation happens in my life through meditation. I have explored the power of imagination. This is not some zodiac, Scientology, metaphysical thing. This is a principle. Listen to the advice that God gave Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's attempt to round up. He said, this book of the law, please give it to us, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shall meditate. I thought I was, do you know, I literally was seeing it. 
<laughs> Truly speaking, <laughs> you guys are delaying. Okay, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. Listen, but thou shalt meditate therein meditate therein not meditate any other place you don't meditate on what you want you meditate on the word of god not just look at a newspaper and say hi hey, again Boko Haram. and you are looking and you are thinking about a solution for your church it won't come that way are we together Thou shalt meditate during day and night. When you meditate, an information will come from it. Then you observe to do. And then your way becomes prosperous. You don't act first. You sit down and allow the creative force of God's wisdom come to your life. Lord, my wedding is five months. All we have is 100,000. The budget is 2.5. There's got to be a way out. Not hi, God. You sent me mm, Jesus. Talk to me. My spirit is open. I silence every voice of fear. Silence them first. I silence every wicked voice that wants to make God look unfaithful in my life. Lord, you are faithful and you are sitting down. And the spirit of wisdom begins to move. The spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything. He can just say, Call one person, and you call the person. And he says, I'm going to do a transfer. You will think it's 100,000. You will see 3 million. And God says, now it has come. Go and marry your wife. And other people will see you and say, you that I know. Abba, my brother. And you, you will quietly go back and give God glory. Ah, God, wisdom has covered for me. That's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own. Based on the physical parameters you see, but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours. Wisdom bail them out. Someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight. Because the depending on men forever, let God send them. Remember I told you all blessings come from God through men to you. But when you begin to depend on men, depending on men is addictive. Is addictive. Those men can even be your father and your mother. Many of us who have all this right conscious mentality. My father, you are the one that gave birth to me. You are 40 years, you are still saying it. And God may not cause what is happening in your family, but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out. And then you sit down. And then you worry and call it meditation. And God says, no. Worrying, I've stopped you from doing that. But you sit down. And you meditate let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution no i wish it were so sometimes it can happen but that's just god's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day that it doesn't come with the speed you want you will know god has been faithful and you will stay there are people who stay for weeks weeks turn to months every multi-millionaire knows this thing i'm telling you that their result is not just based on what they do, but based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions. It is true. Way before God blessed this ministry with these crowds, I had captured it. It's there. Do you believe what I've taught you tonight? My, my prayer for you is not just that you finish a service today and say, wow, nice, <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say, Lord, I know I'm a prayer warrior, but there is no time in silence to sit quietly, wake up in the night and think, Lord, what is the next key? What is the next step? There are bills before me. What is the next step? This is the dimension we must step into as a ministry. There has to be a way out. Don't say there is no way. Don't join Satan. Saying there is no way is calling God a liar. You open scripture. No. There is a way. Ah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. 
Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light my light. have taught you is the secret for the hand of God upon your life financially you will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same because out of the abundance of the heart what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind it's not about doing things you tell people these things they never listen because most people think men of God know nothing about finances and people run around looking for all kinds of give me money let me do this and God says one thing is needful settle down first apostle what do you think I can do to prosper sit down no I, my, blood, my blood is hot calm down and one the breath of the spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort the lord will create a wonder out of your life hear what i'm saying write the challenges let me give you an assignment go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting god for and sit with a clean sheet of paper and your bible and worship and just keep looking at them let me teach you this in conclusion can i can i am i free to teach you look at me <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. Labaka sude bila hasiana kataboshi. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching and he said the eye is the light of the body. Listen carefully. Please, please listen. The eye is the light of the body. Do you know what Jesus was saying? I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable. Go and Google the parables of Jesus. You don't see that story as a parable. He was giving something he was teaching a powerful principle that the eye these two objects you see in front of your face that there is a mystery seeing is only one of the functions and it's simply because that's all science told you there is a system of transporting realities to and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes that's why god healed every blind person he saw there was no blind person that passed jesus that was not healed there were other cripples that he left them but he was violent on blindness there is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny listen paul became blinded by the glory of god but god had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep light me lord light my life light my destiny brothers and sisters there are secrets in this book when you find it your results are not just an issue of wish these eyes you see let me tell you what happens anything the eye makes contact with consistently the mind the mind listen to me carefully what your eyes makes contact with it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality now watch this it is not the thinking about it it is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit now the holy ghost knows the solution are we together now you meditate not just by closing your eyes alone because sometimes you close the physical eyes but you are still seeing are we together now and so 
that's the reason why you pray well in the night because there are few distractions your eye is seeing but you just see black and white this color sometimes can create noise it is an enemy to meditation are we together go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you where you are not seeing the speaker Nepa took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you this eye is a transmitter the same way you have a radio wave watch this not just your ears this eye the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk that you lift an antenna and it starts receiving the before you the goal is to get that sound to your radio is that true but you lift up something that something is your eyes that when you begin to make contact with the Word of God I don't mean reading it just looking open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things what did David know so you are making contact and all of a sudden let me tell you what will happen very soon your eyes will stop seeing you are looking but you are no longer seeing your mind is what takes over have you seen that happen that you are reading something and for hours you keep reading the same line you can't move forward that's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you in that case worrying the eyes then your ears these things are gates I'm showing you notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever you never sit down particularly to hear them but after hearing them five or six times you know the next song and you can sing along if they ask you to sing it on your own now you can't sing but once they play it you can follow it and sing these are systems the eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery yes he told the man at get beautiful look at us use your eyes i'm about to talk to you i thought you said give me your ears he said look at us steadfastly and he looked at them and he said now you are seeing what was the requirement of elijah receiving from elijah not if you can hear me if you can was he not looking at him this is your bible i'm not reading an occult book this is your bible when jesus was le was levitating to heaven the bible says they kept looking at him their eyes stayed on him until the clouds received him and something happened to them could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around now that's why you don't remember the faces of blind people because you cannot see their eyes the 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 part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes let's pray light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light my life. The Bible says, "Doth not wisdom cry. It personifies wisdom. That wisdom is calling on people and say, please, don't attempt to live without me. When the Lord was creating the heavens and the earth, the spirit of wisdom was there. Your life cannot be created without it. The manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom. 
without wisdom revelation is not even possible the spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions brothers and sisters you will watch mountains before you crash and people look at you and say what wisdom is this there is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom every time you see mighty works strange results at the back of it is a scriptural solution is a mystery that was unveiled when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you then all other manifestations of the spirit can be made possible without it you are just joking around i saw this in my life i craved for the spirit of wisdom i pursued it with my life and my all the day the spirit of wisdom came upon me i knew i have been studying the bible but brothers and sisters when the spirit of wisdom comes your results change immediately in a strange way the speakings of the spirit we need this for our families could this be why your ministry has been grounded could this be why our families never rise to certain extent we think the thing is just about more money or more this or more that no please help them we are going to spend two or three minutes crying out in the spirit and say lord a baptism i'm tired of no results in my life i'm tired of foolish decisions in my life pray Pray and let the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Never stranded of solutions. Never stranded of solutions. There is always something to do. There is some, always a way of moving forward. Pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Everything that has bread. Everything that has bread. Everything that has bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I receive the grace to manifest supernatural solutions over every challenge of my life. Lift your voice and pray. There is an answer. There has to be an answer. There is an answer. There is an answer. Hey, bakata, kata, balakata. I can't be stranded forever. There is an answer. Seke toko shoto barakata. Hidden in the spirit of wisdom is an answer. A strange answer. Lord, there is an answer to my financial predicament. There is an answer to the challenge in my life. That you have not seen it and you have not received it does not mean it is not there. There has to be an answer to the challenges in my family. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive a strategy say it in the name of Jesus I receive the strategy out of confusion out of pain out of tragedy lift your voice and begin to pray there has to be a strategy he made his ways known to Moses by the spirit of wisdom
there has to be a way I cannot beg forever there is a way to the anointing there is a way to my ministry rising there is a way there is a way there has to be a way I receive I receive divine strategies illumination You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you move mountains. Let me give us one more prayer. By the grace of God, we are a people of prayer. Most of the churches and the body of believers within this region are a people who have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. But we lack the grace for creativity. We lack the grace for imagination. The breath of the spirit upon your mind I like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace to meditate. The grace to bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. The grace to use my mind to allow the Holy Ghost breathe upon my mind. Are you praying? God gave you a mind to bring victory to your life. He gave you a mind not just to watch things happen. Believe me, the solution is locked up within you. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin his work of creation. The answer will come. Pray. Baptize my mind. Baptize my mind. There is an answer locked up by the Holy Ghost. My mind can produce supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Listen. The worst the worst condition of a man is madness. In my opinion, the worst condition of a man is madness, where the devil has hijacked your capacity to create. This is how companies come into being. This is how churches increase and expand. This is how business corporations rise. This is how individuals rise. They can stay with the Holy Ghost and say there's got to be a way. And they stay there and stay there until something comes from heaven. And they run with it and the vision speaks in the end. And their lives look miraculous. There is no mystery behind it. It's the sacrifice of meditation. Every religion, every sect, agrees on this one thing that meditation brings creation hallelujah lord may my mind be a channel for strategies to come from heaven lift your voice and pray may my mind be a channel you didn't give me a mind just to gossip and loiter around stop all this moving up and down and sit down Sit down with the Holy Ghost. Sit down. Let him breathe upon your eyes. Let him breathe upon your ears. Let him breathe upon your mind. And my brother, my sister, your life will change. 
in a way that will surprise you is a guarantee that I give you. The hidden wisdom that the princes did not know. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So God used that strategy and slew the lamb from the foundations of the earth. So there was no problem to it manifesting because it had been a reality. The plan of salvation. Go to come, let us build a city. It is a carry blocks. He said, sit down, let's build a city. And they gave access to demon spirits to begin to brood on their creativity. They saw it happening. And the Bible says in chapter 11 from verse 5 that God came down. They had not started building. But the Bible says God came down to see the city which the son of man had built. It. They had finished it. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you will never do anything great. This is it. The spirit of God with the raw material of your mind not business not job stay with him finish that work with him that's why there is nobody who cannot rise your little one room with roaches around no problem use it as the place like the cave of Adullam start from there it's unfortunate when you rise without knowing what you did because there is then no way you teach people. He said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. Listen, you see, this is what makes you confident in your results. You know how they came and you know what to keep doing. That's why you see ministries after 45 years still standing. The people are not fools. When you see great men like our father, Bishop Oedipo, and, and um, Papa uh, um, 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 Adeboe, you see all of them talk, you think they are arrogant. They are not fools. That's why Bill Gates remains the wealthiest man. That's why all of these people come. They replace him for a moment today, he gets back again. And all of them keep recycling among their circle. It never goes anywhere because they know. They have lost the ability to allow any other thing incubate negativism is the mystery behind the wealthy getting wealthier and the poor getting wealthier poorer because all they see keeps making sure they remain there the only thing they make the contact with and hear are things that keep reprogramming like you have water cycle you have nitrogen cycle you have poverty cycle you have wealth cycle where things reinforce themselves again when i started working in the anointing my eyes did not see so much results. So sometimes you need to push through. But because I have made contacts with the result, it has created a cycle. You see that? So you are not trying to get the power of God to move. Your mind has been indoctrinated. It has become a stronghold that the power of God can move. So the Holy Spirit comes through your mind like neural parts we teach us in neurology that every time you think the brain can create pathways to repeat those thoughts again. That's what happens to you. Lift your hands. Our time is gone. But I truly, truly want God to do much in your life this year. He declared that it's a year of signs and wonders. We are starting the seven days of fasting. Please don't miss it. Every night I'm going to be bringing mystery upon mystery and we're going to be praying that these things will push our lives forcefully to dimensions you never dreamt possible. I stretch my hands towards you and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, may the spirit of wisdom, not just the gift of wisdom, the spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that brings strategies to you. I release that dimension in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Please help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare inside overflow one, two, three, those following online. From tonight, begin to birth creative solutions. In the name of Jesus. By this impartation, I declare that every mountain that stands before you on 
its encounter with the spirit of wisdom may it become a level playing ground in the name of Jesus please keep standing there are people here who need to hand over their lives to Christ Jesus Christ is the factor please keep standing let's honor those coming out now Jesus Christ is the reason and the only reason why the things we are teaching works he is the power behind creation he is the power behind prayer he is the power behind this knowledge are we together he said ye must be born again there are people scattered across this auditorium and around in the various overflows who are saying man of God I have been so blessed tonight but truly I have not handed my life over to Jesus or there are people who are saying man of God I need to make my ways right with God I have I remember coming out to make an altar call but as it is right now I know that I've derailed from the part of the spirit and I want to be restored wherever you are we have two minutes for you overflow three you can walk to your projector stand outside overflow three you can just walk to the front of your projector stand overflow one and two and those inside please make your way quickly you are making this decision if you are outside please run our time is gone i want to lead you to jesus god bless you you are inside this auditorium make your way to the front god bless you young man god bless you koinonia appreciate them they are coming make your way keep coming i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of good and not of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Overflow one and two, quickly. Please let them rush if you're coming. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Let the Lord come and change your life. Don't sit down when you know that your way is not right with God. No one will force you. But I want you to make that decision for the sake of your destiny. Thank you, Jesus. Overflow 3, just walk to the front of your projector stand. If you're coming out quickly, quickly, quickly join them. Man of God, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Join them. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. God bless you. Hallelujah. Join them quickly. Now, I want to lead you. She's coming. Please hurry up. Hurry up quickly. Hurry up quickly. Come stand. Now, thank you so much for this great decision. I want you to lift your right hand and say this after me passionately. You're not reciting a poem say Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God that you died for me join them yes. tonight I hand my life over to you be my Lord be my savior I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight until forever I belong to you. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, help them. May your spirit that we have so much talked about and acknowledged even tonight rest upon them. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may they rise from glory to glory. Give them a new experience. Lord, I pray that you authenticate their prayers by granting them access to the spirit of truth. I pray that your grace will keep them in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah God bless you thank you so much God bless you please return okay follow um, the gentleman waving his hands all of you they'll take you outside and um, you'll be back now please just to announce to us that um... thank you so much for the many people please if, if they if they are comfortable standing let them stand um, it's going to be a whole lot of let's see how it goes if they get too tired i'm sure outside will be cold and wet but if we can get a few of them there then uh, that would be fine but um, i know it's cold it's the season and um, better days are coming the day will come when it is raining you will not even know enjoy the process never pity yourself on your way to greatness enjoy every process be featured on the way so that you will have a story to tell let it not be that it was when everybody arrived that you came 
so that you will have a story too. Say so one day, whilst listening to the word of God, I was standing outside cold. And you look at your children and say, it was that diligence that brought about the blessings we have today. Hallelujah. I have learned never to be embarrassed for as long as I know I am on the path to greatness. Follow it. In the rain, the sun, in convenience and in inconvenience, follow it diligently and be proud of your pursuit and sacrifices. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. Life is intentional. Progress is intentional. It will cost you. It has never been a secret. The cost dimension of life is not a secret. It's a price that is obvious. Everyone knows that to be great, there will be sacrifices. There will be seasons of constraint. Only a fool expects results without process. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing. We are proud of where you are leading us. And Lord, we ask for grace to learn to appreciate and to access the keys that will help us rise in the name of Jesus. I've been thinking about tonight's meeting. Um, I think about all the meetings, but tonight's meeting struck me because um, every once in a while, the Holy Spirit just gives me an opportunity to reminisce on all the teachings that have come. Um, and I submit to us in this house that God has granted us access to many many teachings this year alone we have been exposed to several teachings and you see the goal of these teachings these teachings are informations they are revelations that we are supposed to receive we are supposed to believe we are supposed to engage them and then watch them produce results in our lives and lift us from one dimension to the other hallelujah the goal of revelation is the transformation that it brings so that your life becomes an epistle you become a testimony that god did not lie in that area and truly it takes a while for the truth to settle in us and produce the desired result but we must endure hearing once learning once knowing once does not get the job done we must immerse ourselves it's from the word baptizo baptism we must immerse ourselves in this truth until we are literally possessed by them and then they will produce undeniable results in our lives proverbs chapter 4 There's a song in my spirit. Let praises rise from the inside. You know the song? From the inside of me. Of me. May you delight. Very powerful song. In the inside. In the inside of me. Of me. instruction of a father and attend to no understanding we're reading 
down to verse 9 for i give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law verse 3 for i was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother for he taught me also and said unto me let thine heart retain my words keep my commands and leave five get wisdom get understanding although it is so volatile but forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth forsake her not and she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all your getting get understanding exalt her esteem her place value on her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee praise the lord i am amazed at what the wisdom of God can do in the life of an individual, an organization, a church, a ministry, I am awed. While I was coming, I was talking to one of the protocol the persons who was with me, and I was just nodding my head, and I told him, I said, the wisdom of God, we desperately, desperately need the wisdom of God. You see, the Bible says, there is a way please listen carefully there is a way that seemeth right unto a man there is a way that culture proposes and says men walk in it there is a way that intellectualism sophia human wisdom experience are we together now encapsulated in education science whatever it is the logic of life there is a way that it leads you there is a way that society leads you to approach life there is a way your instinct that is a derivative of the unrenewed mind leads you but the bible says listen carefully it says the end thereof are the ways of death our society is full of people guessing their ways our society is full of people hoping they are right our society is full of people imagining that they will make it young people fathers mothers leaders largely walking in confusion hoping that we understand what we are doing Do you know sometimes when i stand and i look at people i just feel like crying because i'm tempted to ask the question truly speaking who did this to us at what point did the confusion start are we together i have been passionate and you would have noticed that i i discovered that we have done well in this house with respect to exposing us to encounters by god's grace teachings have come teachings after teachings helping us to understand the person the ministry of the holy spirit we have seen encounters we have seen the power of god we have seen the glory of god but at the start of this year when the lord told me it was our year of triumph i took out time to take a little inventory and i found out that um, although god had helped us we were lacking grossly in the understanding of the systems of the kingdom we were doing well in terms of encounters the love for god passion prioritizing god but i knew that we needed to step up our understanding otherwise frustration will be inevitable it is painful to love god and still fail did you hear what i said it is it is justifiable to to hate to fail when you hate god and fail you say after all i'm not serious but when you love god a dear lady asked me a question day before yesterday i think and she said apostle are there good men i'm not teaching on, on men are there good men again and I said, are you kidding? Of course they are. 
and she said my mother was a good woman why is her life this way and it struck me again see let me tell you this you never never guess your way to greatness you never get your way to guess your way to peace the older you become it does not equate to the wiser you become there are 70 80 90 year old people remember we are conditioned environmentally that means that somebody mentored somebody who mentored somebody who mentored somebody who went to a school and submitted himself to a teacher's view who mentored somebody who later married somebody who mentored some children we our society is a chain of mentorship largely a communication of informations that are unscriptural and inaccurate are we together this is a very uncomfortable truth but we have to admit it because our lives and our results show that we obviously are missing it somewhere let me challenge us a bit look at your finances you will agree with me that something is missing somewhere look at your family life married or not if you're married look at your family why the fight why the quarrel it gets worse if both of you are christians look at the children why are they unruly why are they indisciplined how about your job look at the retrogression in our lives are we together now and do you know what most people will say this is what we say i don't know what i don't know why things are not working i've taught you here and i will drum it until it enters your spirit nothing works by itself nothing works by itself marriage does not work by itself spiritual life does not work by itself becoming blessed and wealthy does not work by itself becoming employed becoming responsible does not work by itself becoming a virtuous lady becoming a responsible man does not work by itself brothers and sisters growing spiritually does not work by itself becoming transformed does not work by itself everything in life must be engaged with wisdom to produce are we together now our confusion in life is because our intentions are not our results what we desire is not what we see so we desire a particular outcome but certain other outcomes keep happening and they keep repeating themselves regardless of the strategies we are trying ask any family represented here they will tell you we are tired of suffering we are tired of argument we are tired of pain can't we live in peace then they hold a meeting and say let's live in peace they all agree two days later everybody has gone haywire do you know why because the issue is not counseling the issue is the bankruptcy of certain informations our unwillingness to admit that time does not give knowledge please can you just flow just play something to flow hallelujah time does not impart knowledge time never never decides anything time only reveals I can go on my knees tonight and beg every one of you listening to me here listening online we are not acting on stage this thing is not a drama we are trying to act called ministry we are talking about transforming people there there is an exact formula you have to understand this there is a programming society has programmed our minds Africa has been programmed in a certain way demons have worked with informations for years and decades they have come from culture to culture from university to university from college to college from school to school they have indoctrinated men into thinking and understanding life in a particular way that is producing unfavorable outcomes listen pain will never produce change it only reveals the need for change that you are going through an unfavorable situation does not mean it will change 
that you are crying and say oh god will you not wipe my tears it may provoke the mercy of god but every time god wants to show you mercy he does two things he sends his word and he sends men the solution to our problems our challenges the doors we trust and hope to open are shrouded in men and information you reject men you reject truth you will die it says love me proverbs chapter 4 paraphrasing right that i will preserve you i will glorify you i will put an ornament of glory upon you please listen to me the hardest person the hardest person to ever help is the man and the woman who is resistant to change the moment an individual holds on to an old idea an old information whether theologically established philosophically established educationally established it doesn't matter what the basis is for as long as you are unwilling to open up your mind for the vetting and the probing of the spirit if per adventure the information you have carried on through your life is wrong there is nothing embarrassing about discovering that you have believed a lie you can change there is always time for a meek and a humble person who will say look i believe there has to be why am i a bad father begging and begging i'm 50 years we are still staying in a rented apartment i love god something is wrong why is there no favor in my life everything i lay my hands to do doesn't work listen listen this is not the issue of man of god pray for me this is the issue of submitting yourself to say i know that i am missing something because your life is producing a result it's just that it's the result you don't want if your life were not producing pain is a result failure is a result it means you are activating certain principles unknowingly limitations are results Am I blessing you tonight? Let's not act as if God is so wicked and cannot help us and cannot change us and cannot lift us. Hear me, your life and my life is at the mercy of our understanding of the systems of the kingdom. Provided we submit ourselves to understand it, I give you a guarantee your light will come. But for as long as we sit down and allow demons to build fortification, along our wrong thinking our wrong mindset we argue and insult and move in pride especially for we the men because you see men our that sense of authority and dominion sometimes the false version of it has eaten us up the fact that we have accessed certain information for years does not mean it is valid a whole nation can be wrong that an information is old does not make it right it's been there but it's not right are we together our society is full of needless pain and sorrow sorrow upon sorrow there are families today that cannot live in peace they love god tongue talking some of them are even walking in the vineyard of god but the systems of God that have been allocated to make for peace is not there. Divorce rates are soaring. Young people marrying the lifetime of marriages, two years. Lovely people, educated, they love God. Once upon a time, they could not sleep until they talked with themselves. Two years later, they hate themselves. What do you not know? Why do people fail? a family of 10 people nobody ever rises beyond certain barriers we we say demons yes it is the obvious reason but not the only reason something authorized them a door was open to them most of us the demons have been casted yet our lives have not changed because there is an equation that will have to commit us commit our understanding and our participation anybody who is unwilling to listen to this has failed not will fail has failed hallelujah when i understood the systems of god my life changed 
do you know someone sent me a text today lamenting and languishing on a lot of things in his life you know certain monies he was hoping he can get and he said if i can just get this 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 i will have peace i said no sir no sir you can have peace now peace is a revelation peace is a revelation it is not the product of the arrival or departure of certain factors peace is a revelation you can choose to be frustrated and wrinkle yourself to death our society is full of angry people whose lack of understanding has added to their age young people looking old why because a revelation has programmed them even their bodies they have wrinkled themselves 10 years ahead of their age moving in anger and frustration I came here tonight to challenge us God is not a magician God is not just a miracle worker God is a God of principles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and so God intervenes supernaturally to correct it a principle is a sign that things are working as designed are we together now yes every one of us seated here came from a family listen carefully came from a culture and all of our cultures have certain tenets certain understandings foundationally we were indoctrinated with those things as a template for living we have perspectives financially speaking we have perspectives maritally speaking we have perspectives even in our pursuit of godliness we have perspectives in the area of parenting we have perspectives in the area of education and orientation we have perspectives in just our sociological living relationships and most of these perspectives most of it was fabricated by men and women who did not it was not a derivative of the ministry of the holy spirit it came as a result of people carving out a a system of relationship based on their pain their hatred their frustration and let me tell you something that you are born again does not transform you automatically it is only the access point for transformation to start being born again means that you are now authorized to legally begin to engage yourself in transformation there is something that we have allowed we have introduced it like a drug in our spirits in our minds that is cancerous is producing outcomes we do not desire so you see a lot of people and they tell you this is what i want but then their lives never produce it because another system is interrupting your desire and compelling a result that is not consistent with your desire see that so every time you come for koinonia know this that your coming for koinonia is a bailout system god is rescuing you some of you god is single-handedly picking you out of a family of 11 people to say look if you people keep praying and doing night vigils you will do it forever the, the spiritual dimension is ready to be corrected but there is a level of partnership with the holy spirit through knowledge through understanding there is something you must engage nobody nobody is born successful even if you are born into a rich family it is not your success the bible says in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it said this book of the law shall not depart this compendium of mysteries this this the, the wisest perspective in all matters let it not depart he said but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently right he said that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein it leaves you with a promise not a suggestion he says then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good there is bad and wicked and foolish success there is good success look at me there is no such thing that god chose one person sam come and said you you will succeed and then chose another person and say you you will fail no way god is very just he created the systems and said anybody that wants to succeed subscribe to it in other words my being successful is not something god just chose to do last week he allocated the pathway the same way when you follow a road the government they, they built the road 
whoever wants to get to that destination follow it whether a child whether an adult the road does not ask you how old you are provided you are following legally it says go you don't go to buy a car and they ask you how old you are no no once you can pay for it it is given to you is that true why are we failing why are things not working in our lives why are we sitting down hoping that one day god will change whereas he has decided you see if the will of god is not known to us if the will of god is not known to us we will keep praying foolish prayers and we'll keep asking as if it is god's pleasure to watch us go through pain and frustration something we do not know is responsible for these pains and these tragedies please give us jeremiah 29 and verse 11 jeremiah 29 and verse 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you this is god speaking thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you other versions say a future and an expected end a defined end not not an end that uh, let's just be going and we hope no 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 an expected end that means there's something god has for me joshua selman in the blueprint of prophecy he designed that i will become something whether or not i become it is not up to him he has designed it it is my cooperation with him that will determine whether i will leave the reality of prophecy there are people god designed to be millionaires as it is they have never touched one million but in the heart in the loins of prophecy is their heritage is their destiny one of the most deceptive statements in the church is if god wants me he has the power to make it it is it is using the truth to kill you are using the truth like a knife and turning it to pierce people to say if god wants it he will make it no there are many things god wants to do that is not yet done on earth it is his will that all men be saved there are men still going to hell the fact that somebody went to hell is a sign that if you don't change nothing will change because if god has people to attend to he will attend to those going to hell first before the issue of rent are we together sorry i'm sure they are working on the sound if it does go off then we are going to pray is that fine promise already gave us uh, so I, I think i've said enough for us to pray for any reason the sound goes off just fire and pray very seriously and say lord what i've had so far you see how my life is going you lay your hands and you pray don't laugh you pray and say father I know I bear witness with the fact that I am confused as I'm standing now I don't know my left from my right I'm just growing older you need to give me direction and decorum hallelujah Do you know marriages now are some of the most fearful things once you see two people about to get married the first thing I look is not whether they love themselves the first thing I look is whether they understand the systems of the kingdom you just carry a lady you carry a lady that you want to marry and two of you stand and we say now what is the name of what you are doing you say we love ourselves and uh, we're trusting the lord to live together that's wonderful it's a good starting point but do you understand the mysteries that have been allocated for living for the next 60 years knowing that you will get old she will get old not knowing physically speaking the things that the future holds do you understand the mysteries what if after your wedding night somebody appears and say you took my wife do you know what to do or will you cry this is what we are talking about if you get married to this wonderful lady now for instance and in the night while you are sleeping you are happy wedding night you danced all through the day and on your wedding night a stranger appears and say well in case you don't know they don't marry anyhow from this family and since you came foolishly i am here do you understand that this one is not love again this is spiritual intelligence because many of us will get up and say ah, honey i had a very bad dream let me it's not just a bad dream your life is about to be wrecked into pieces 
because we live in an environment that we walk through spiritual intelligence now love took you there understanding keeps you understanding keeps you brothers and sisters don't say i got born again you have watched seven people from your family the highest time they stayed in their marriages were two years what makes you think you will stay more so it, it is true love your wife but much more than that access the keys access the keys are we together what if your wife gets pregnant and you hear a report and they say the body the baby is turning anyhow and is about to kill your wife what mystery do you know that's no longer love what do you know are you hearing what i'm saying when you start building your house and someone comes the next day you come and see the blood of a goat on they demarcate it on the side of your fence you don't know the person who put it but you put it there and then they leave a letter if you add one more block you will die responsible gentleman you went to school but what are you going to do about that situation listen carefully to what i'm telling you those who are those of our parents fathers and mothers here know they they understand what i'm saying is the young people that are just laughing and joking when you rise and become responsible for your life you know that this world is a fierce place it's not a place of joke at all you see a letter written there nobody has built in this house in this family what gives you the audacity to say you want to start building a house at 27 they put that blood there as a sign be warned can you answer whoever wrote it without seeing him because the person put it and ran away can you carry the block by yourself and drop it and say because of what you said mason we are working day and night ah it's risky to not know how to respond did you hear what i said it's not just dangerous it's risky hear what i'm saying it's risky you go for a wedding and you are dancing and somebody comes to just touch you and hug you and rub all kinds of things on you and go away is there a system of immunity that answers immediately i'm not talking of prayer your life has been equipped already by default that woman touches something and as she's going back headache starts first then the leg stops working and then whatever shrine tells her you made a mistake big mistake you touch somebody who is not just a dancer on a wedding ground there is a warrior quietly seated what do you know that if because of tribalism they look at you and say we are relieving you from your job your wife is not working you are the only one working on account of your faith and integrity because you refuse to bribe are we together they now bring you a sack letter do you know what else to engage so you don't go hungry or will that experience begin the the start of your frustration what do you know and what do you not know this is what i want you to know on earth the days the days i, I was speaking with a jimmy's father-in-law this morning and he was telling me he said kai that during our time it uh, their time now it was a bit easier and he said during our time now our, the world is spiritual everything i mean you have to be spiritual about everything literally literally many young people are not spiritual i know you are not spiritual because you do not know what to do brothers and sisters when you return home and you see your father beating your mother boxing her you are a stupid woman you are a witch you are a devil as one who has worked with god do you know what to do or will you stand and say let me separate them sorry and you go back to your room and say god when will you wipe our tears do you know what to engage this this is my assignment this year to to equip you to know what to do that issue of man of god pray for me wonderful but what if the man of god is sleeping because it is only the keeper of israel that doesn't sleep joshua selman sleeps and he can slumber 
we keep carrying heart pain and say i called you by 2 30 sir you were sleeping of course well, what is the meaning of that of course are we together there is something we do not know we allow evil to step into our families and just destroy people like chickens and we sit down and say god i think you have to do something wonderful submit your prayer request at miracle service but much more than that will you be able to rise in intelligence look at the suffering that ravages families financially and do you know the pain it happen is happening to people who love and fear God this is what makes it painful if I don't love God and I don't fear God whatever I get I have to admit it but when I love God and fear God I serve him truly I serve him faithfully and then all of a sudden nothing works Lord I'm looking for transport to come to church I can't come for koinonia because there is no transport lord i'm looking for my school fees it's only twenty thousand. it can't happen lord my father is about to die i i, we, I just need five thousand for his drugs is it really the will of god to leave you in that pain who taught you is the will of god are we together We have allowed the devil to destroy our lives. Can I present scenarios right now and ask you what your response will be? Can I give all of you koinonia right now and say from all you have learned from January till now, write the following exam. And then I create an imaginary scene. My dear, we, we want to buy a fan for the worship team. And we leave the spiritual responsibility to you engage every key you know our own is bring us a fan based on the mysteries do you know what to do what are you going to do what is step one what is step two for many of us step one is to cry step two is to argue step three is to look on to man and and step four is to be frustrated but there are others who know what to do are we together yes some of us right now unfortunately our loved ones have gone to be with the lord like the gentleman who said his father has died the, the gentleman sharing the testimony father died mother died he had to stand in as a young man for his sister but what spiritual intelligence he blessed her because he understood that things don't just happen you don't just have twins just because you you are you think you're a matured man and you have a wife that the realm of the spirit controls this realm he did that like a joke came to the house of god for reinforcement the result was as desired when your result is as desired it meant the principle was correct when you have it the way you want it it means that the principle was correct light my life like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. What do you do if you get up in the morning and just feel a sharp pain? Are you intelligent enough to know what to engage? Please, Koinonia, listen to me. I want, you have to learn this thing my assignment this year is to cause you to be spiritual to understand the systems of the kingdom so you know what to do the salvation of many is dependent on your wisdom the correct application you see the bible presents the wisest perspective in all matters the wisest perspective in all matters i don't trust myself outside of the word of god 
the bible is not an opinion to choose what to believe and choose what to refuse it's a compendium of the wisdom of god and he says get wisdom understand how to apply the keys of the kingdom correctly and you will rise up like an edifice if i get up in the morning right now and my chest starts paining me and i start coughing blood do i know what to do or is it the day i'm in the hospital quarter to die that i start saying which message do i listen to the bible says be instant in season these keys will test you do you understand the keys listen listen the bible tells us there are arrows that fly by day i'm not scaring you is the truth are we together now what gives you guarantee that on your way to travel to kaduna or abuja tomorrow the devil is not planning to kill you what if right now god should open your eyes and you see that in the realm of the spirit they have given you 24 hours to die do you know what to engage it's risky to live not knowing what to do it's riskier to make bold face and bold statements when you have not gotten that key because you will brag and talk and talk and be whipped and punished only god knows how many covens only god knows where and where they have taken my name let this guy die let him not reach august only god knows the demons that have been casted out you think they don't take back reports they ask them from whence comest thou i came from koinonia what happened this mad young man this crazy idiot called joshua selman casted us let's plan can we kill him in two weeks yes two more weeks yes they added two more weeks i'm still standing oh he's about to take a flight can we do something because they will plan no they will plan i i wish what i was i was telling you was a lie on tuesday we are going to eat for pastor alpha's program what is the guarantee that you will not die in the, on acts in the accident as you are going what is the guarantee that as we are not drive the car will capsize and kill me i'm coming back for sure If I die, you can say I made noise and I died. But for as long as I'm alive, no. I found it here. The wisdom of God. Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down. And the power to pick it up. Did you hear that? Men are given the power to lay it down. And the power to pick it up. Now, don't feel bad if your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. Don't worry, you are alive now. The responsibility is on you you can't receive this for your family you can only intercede for them when it comes to the matters of the kingdom is first a personal affair it must become truth and life to you they are life to those who find them koinonia they are life to those who find them we live in a fierce and a wicked society if someone one of our ladies was giving me a testimony and she said how that someone came to boggle i think to boggle their room or so and carry a laptop now that whoever that thief is has stolen and has gone sad but do you understand a system in the kingdom because you need the laptop and for some of us maybe that laptop just came it was if somebody gave it to you now you are in a straight betwixt you need that laptop what key do i now engage you can't cry forever now that it has gone what do i do are you hearing what i'm saying i wish we had time tonight we are going to pray seriously i would have called a few people at random and would have just created imaginary life scenarios and i would have asked what you have learned so that we don't keep compounding mysteries upon mysteries upon mysteries there are so many other mysteries lined up that you will be learning between now and the end of the year but the key is are you getting it is it spirit and life to you hallelujah are we together 
one of the mysteries that i'm trusting that the lord god of heaven will help us to conquer is this thing up of poverty and lack hello believers hear me poverty and what say it poverty and poverty and lack is a mystery i told you poverty is a strategy by satan it's a strategy poverty is not just a state of mind it's a spiritual strategy one of the most effective arsenal of satan for making the lives of people useless we come from different backgrounds with different experiences but we can begin to make our choices and trust god to help us i'm not teaching on on poverty or prosperity tonight but um, my, my assignment tonight is to review and introduce us to the keys my heart I, I it kept burning in me since through the week and i said lord my prayer is that your people your people will get this thing that they will understand it and it will rise hallelujah what do you not know sister what are you still allowing inside your head that is authorizing the devil to make life miserable for you brother what is it that god has been trying to pound out of your life that you are refusing to let go me this is how it is so my my i must am this like that that's how we are in our culture where we come from is it working is it working be honest is it working listen one of the keys of great people is their disloyalty to any information that does not produce there's no such thing as i was born with this if it does not work dump it throw it far from you and embrace that which is capable of blessing you the scribes and the pharisees already knew the truth but because of the ethics of tradition are we together now Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. So they knew they were not in confusion, but in the daytime they refused. Why? Because of the rudiments of tradition. The Bible says that has made the word of God of non-effect, as though it were not powerful. Could it be that there is something this gentleman can know he's about writing his last exam if not because of the strike i'm sure maybe this week or next week he would have written his exam now and been a confirmed doctor now six seven years ago he, he probably would have been a naive gentleman just with a desire but he passed through a system month after month principle after principle and now after six years he's one exam to go to become a confirmed doctor and every other person called a medical doctor in the world just becomes a senior or junior colleague instantly what is the difference now whereas somebody would be convulsing eight years ago and this guy will stand confused eight years later someone will be convulsing and say it's all right it's something we can handle because something something and information your fear is a sign that you have not learned something thank you you will never be truly free from fear until knowledge bails you out fear is destroying us fear of the future fear of everything fear of death fear of living young people are afraid will i ever be established with a salary of fifty thousand? As a graduate when will i ever be able to build a house it will not build you a house what will build you a house is the understanding of the word of god they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their arms save them but thou O lord because thou shown a favor towards them you must understand the keys that are responsible for activating the things that we need in life hallelujah mother there is something you can know that can transform your children could it be that the rebellion from the children is a product of an approach that may be cultural but not scriptural 
cultural but not scriptural there are men who are taught beats the living daylight out of your wife it's a way of showing her that you are a man she does anything beat her once she will behave you have tried it infinite times it has not changed that woman may be a sincere woman under the influence of a spirit all that she may need is one encounter with the power of god and she's free and she will be one of the nicest women in the whole world now you can manage you can beat yourself there's there was a gentleman that joined the queue after service and there were like three four five lines to him and i looked at him and i was surprised how could a spirit still be in this guy even after a very heavy service i was looking and i was seeing a spirit the guy was playing but in the realm of the spirit i was seeing so i kept quiet when the guy just came and stood close to me i said what's wrong and the guy said i'm i'm a thief i can steal anything i said ah that's it you see that that take that thief to the prison you you hang him there behind the bars and say promise and write an agreement that you will never touch anybody's biro again while he's doing that the spirit steps out and then the same human being will sign the agreement and the spirit will enter two weeks after going out something starts pushing him it's not him everybody will beat him at home and say what do i do with this child because the mystery one minute prayer how many minutes one minute prayer under the heavy anointing will build that guy's 10 years of misery but because see let me tell you ignorance makes pain continue it prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain ignorance prolongs pain are we together and I just, it was just a simple tap I gave him on the head. And that was the end of it. That wild, wicked spirit. Because the gentleman confessed that he was willing to be free. How about people that come here, you see someone standing, almost staggering. And you say you came, you, you smoked something before you came to church. He won't argue. That's a sign that he wants to change. But there is something he does not know. See, the house of God is truly a blessing is a place where the mysteries that are responsible for your desire are given to you that's why it matters are you seeing the reason why god loves crowd the crowds are made of people the people are made of their needs they need access to the truth to be free that's how we change society i can tell you something and i say it with all my heart and with all joy by the grace of god the marriages that will happen in this ministry will be heaven on earth listen it's not just prophecy alone the keys have been given some of our loved ones here who are married you see the peace and tranquility regardless of what there are some kinds of evil that cannot happen it's gone do you know why knowledge there are people here who have married different tribes the same tribe but same knowledge the same knowledge has brought them into the same kingdom culture i've said it again and again that we will all be great you believe that prophecy and that the best part is that we will all know ourselves you will see it it will start one step don't forget about what you have not gotten today line upon line you are walking you are taking that step and it's in the name of the lord and God is helping you you may not look like it but the hand of God is upon you there is a mystery that is navigating you towards the right path hallelujah Christianity is not a religion Christianity is a work that should be approached with the wisdom of God the Word of God represents the wisdom of God what is the wisdom of God the scriptural solution to every problem on earth the scriptural approach his modus operandi his method is called his wisdom God's approach to life is his wisdom God's approach to life is his wisdom and the Bible is full of it Jesus himself the epitome of wisdom when he came upon the earth we saw the way he approached life 
the spirit of the Christ empowered several people from Genesis to Revelation and they manifested dimensions of living that were supernatural, enviable, admirable. And the Lord has said, this is our year of triumph. We are not going to triumph just through desire. It will be on the strength of what we know. Hallelujah. There is something we must know. There is something I need to know to be higher than where I am. My limitation in life right now is the limitation of how far I've been able to access the wisdom of God. There's more. I've only scratched the surface. If I submit myself and I learn more, I rise more because I begin to see how predictable my life can be on the strength of wisdom. My journey so far is a journey of searching the wisdom of God. Like a man in a gold mine searching for it. When you find it, you rejoice. Because you can stand on the strength. There was something I found out about the anointing. There was something I found out about miracles, signs and wonders. It didn't just happen. There was a day I found it. There was a day I found something about favor. It wasn't always like that. It's not just time that brought favor. No. Time just continued passing. And by the mercy and the grace of God, something was accessed. Listen, there is something you can access today that can make your seven days be equivalent to the blessings of five years. It's not a prayer. It's the truth. There is something you can find that can compress the sufferings and the hardship of men my assignment to you this year is to help you understand this and to through emphasis reiterate it again and again until it becomes your conviction if it is not your conviction you will never walk in it let me tell you the truth these things i teach were not things i started teaching this year i've started teaching it before so don't think it's because god has helped today that i say it's easy to no 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 The wisdom of God what is God's call to you tonight stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing if you are not getting it settle down something is wrong did you hear what I said stop guessing prophesy to somebody stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing no stop guessing everybody doesn't like me what do i do stop guessing there is an exact principle that is responsible for delightsomeness stop guessing why is it that everything i touch doesn't work stop guessing please say it again say it to somebody stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing inside outside online stop guessing it's risky to guess the moment anything is not working in my life i settle down i need to look at this something must be wrong there is something i'm not understanding it makes your journey easier than just guessing trial and error you don't have that much of time for trial and error man of god the power of god is not flowing in your life stop guessing did you hear what i said stop guessing you are not getting something you pray for somebody and say it is done he goes to another man of god just looking at him and the demon goes out stop guessing you just told the guy it is done it is not done the, the guy still has the spirit is still there are we together the person came to you for prayer you now came and say oh um, i've been suffering bad luck my whole life everything is going wrong and he said really father we thank you we ask that um, this gentleman be free he says amen now the fact that he said amen does not mean heaven said amen the pastor prayed don't say they prayed for me who prayed for you what did the person who prayed for you know what did he know while he was praying for you i can pray for this person but the efficacy of my prayer is tied to the limitation of the knowledge i know don't just say they prayed for you who prayed for you and what was what what is the the reservoir of the spiritual knowledge that was resident in the person who prayed for you it's not just that they prayed for you so you tell this guy go in the name of jesus it is done 
this gentleman goes and nothing happens stop guessing the person comes somewhere else other than your own place are we together and stands and someone looks at him and says hold my hand i bless you that's it this gentleman walks out before he gets home an alert has come a call has come is that guessing no sir a gentleman prays for twins over his sister comes for koinonia drops the result when he was praying the twins did not know they were praying for them but they still came out as twins is that guess remember he was not the husband of the wife he was a brother ah. if you can pray for twins and they come out twins think of what else you can determine right on paper and say after two years rent over you wrote it on paper two years later you are standing in your own house where you can set the rules and not have anyone harass you do you believe this that means there's something you can write about your job and say in the name of jesus by october i am employed gainfully employed and then you write a salary structure lord i'm trusting you 150 to 200,000. While you are writing it, those who don't know God say you are a stupid person. Don't mind them. Don't be angry. They are only revealing to you what they have not been taught. So don't argue. You argue you have brought yourself down. You write it. By October, you are on a job. 150,000. For what he said, he's able to do. Are we together? Yes. You can make up your mind and say in the name of Jesus, I love God. But I'm not going to marry a fool. I won't marry a stupid man. I'm going to marry somebody that loves God, loves me and is serious. While you are saying it, your friends will say, you, you better just say yes to any man that comes. So the way we do this thing now, go online, find any photo you want, click like on Facebook, pursue that person till he says yes and marry quietly. That is their own way. And they will give you one or two testimonies of those who it worked for. Did they tell you they are in peace now? You say it and you confess. And you don't just confess as a lady and stop there. You now say, okay, I understand that life is about partnership. Lord, what is my contribution? You can't sit down not doing anything and want God to carry his son that he has refined and worked upon, worked diligently upon and brought out the best in him and, and just give you. God is not unjust. Are we together? Lord, what do I need to do? And God starts working on you. Materialism, throw it out. Be mouthy and talking anyhow, throw it out. You must be of a meek and a quiet spirit. You want to marry a great man, this your talk talk, you will tear down his business. God has helped this guy before your arrival. You won't come as a destroyer. Are you ready? And so you are, he's walking. He's taking it out of you. In two months, you, have, you are transformed. You have become such a virtuous lady. You who will be running your mouth, talking all kinds of things. You who say, if, if the guy does not have this, if there's no gym, I will marry. God has worked on you. And that way, he can now bring you to the person he has destined for you. And you will now be a blessing. The same way as a guy, any lady you see, ah, this lady is pretty. You are not doing anything. You are not serious. You don't know God. You don't know the loss of life. There's no structural establishment. God is not helping you. Yet you are just standing and making noise. The systems of God. Oh, I want to be a great pastor. And you start a church. One year, two years, three years, you are still on four members. Then you start criticizing and say, it's not everybody that has crowd. Oh, keep quiet. You are not getting something. Find out lord what what am i missing and god says one no wisdom two the level of grace there's no result three people are not being changed everybody you prayed for there's no testimony why should people come members are not idiots they will run to where god will visit them criticize them they will not stop members are not stupid in this nigeria of today oh no no people are wise you can keep running your mouth against people while people look for where their solutions are in the rain they will stand in the sun they will stand because what they are going through is, is worse than the sun so they will stand anywhere to make sure they receive please i want you to make up your mind today that anything that is not working in your life 
just know remember what i said stop guessing stop guessing stop guessing just calm down invite the holy spirit spirit of the living god i am not getting something i am not getting something a meek heart i am not getting something you gave me a beautiful wife now i hate her no affection for my wife again you bless me i'm about to throw my wife out of the house i don't give money nothing what is wrong spirit of the living god help me help me and then light comes dwell with them according to knowledge ah that means there's something i do not understand i think my wife is another man now the bible is bailing me out are we together yes so the next time you meet your wife and she asks you she say how was the how was the um, how was your job today and you say fine say no give me details you won't get angry you will know that that's how women are dwell with them according so you will start we went by 7 a.m uh -huh. by eight o'clock they gave us tea uh -huh. they, you are paying that price because you now understand the systems while you are paying that price what are you going to get a reward you will get a hug you will get a nice meal and you will get you a darling you see that you made adjustment or you can stand and brag and say me i'm a one word man and punish yourself and your life will not go forward how about employees that never get promoted and think it's just demons if you like pour one gallon of anointing oil in your head you are not productive when they want to downsize people they give you you came to work two months they gave you warning you are not productive sir customer relations zero friendliness at work zero on the job zero experience zero humility to learn zero initiative zero even if i'm the one who employed you you are going yes you are going that you are a member of coin you are not productive so instead of just sitting down to get angry and say my boss is a wicked man do you know how much that guy collects 1.2 and he's giving me fifty thousand. no lord i love my boss i pray for him in the name of jesus i declare he is a leader there is something he knows that is setting him above he may not be a very nice man but in the name of jesus i pray for him and i love him and you walk up to him and say sir i just want to say thank you i've been working here eight months and i appreciate your mentorship and your leadership i just brought this wine to say thank you say what what, what is it for i mean I'm, I'm paying you no 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 sir i want to thank you much more than the salary you are changing my life if there is anything that can make me improve i am ready to learn always know that you are finding a very worthy mentee in me thank you sir and you go out you have programmed something he will act as if he did enter him keep watching the day promotion is coming and then somebody now comes to say do you know this person is yoruba he says hey, shut up it's my company it's my job you gave him memories you showed him that you were ready to learn the moment you step out he writes your name thank god this is the person i've been looking for and then he calls you one day and gives you a very difficult task and you start saying kai my boss has been on my case for two months he's testing you he's seeing that you are the next person who should be the director of that department he you have you are earning his trust but your lack of understanding is making you interpret it as wickedness you brought your boss's name for uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, miracle service you dropped it on and not just you didn't just write his name you say oh god punish this guy frustrate the tokens of this and that whereas listen if you had understanding and wisdom you would know that that's your lifting why does he ask me to stay back when others are going and then he gives me a hard job and then he shouts at me and i apologize and he does not say sorry he's not a fool there's something he knew that made him the boss keep watching while he's acting he's taking note one day he calls you and says look um i know that it's not my character to do this but i want you to know that i am absolutely impressed i have watched you for six months all the other people are arguing around those who are insulting him and then he lifts you overnight and then you continue praying for him again will he be perfect no he will do foolish things 
he will do stupid things but he's still your boss one day he calls you and says look you are so smart why are you still working in this corporation i think you are smart enough to have your own company and he says look call abc and tell them i said they should help you and in three years you have become a ceo of yourself you have become colleagues brothers and sisters lack of wisdom is destroying us are we not seeing this thing our interpretation about people and life is a product of a, a bankruptcy of life we call light darkness we call darkness light are we together we call a process failure we call failure defeat we don't know how to allocate names based on wisdom we call everything everything but god is teaching us tonight that the kingdom of god has systems i came with a fire burning in my spirit tonight that if you can learn the systems of god you will laugh when others are frowning and they will ask you why are you frowning and then you say there's a light that i see that's why i'm laughing you know in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that i see only comes alive every time i hear your voice it comes it comes alive every time i hear your voice there's a joy in my heart in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy in my soul only comes alive every time i hear your voice it comes it comes alive every time i hear your voice and there's a peace hey in my heart in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and these beats that i have only comes alive every time i hear your voice it comes it comes alive every time i hear your voice Alive. Every time I hear your voice. Do you know why? Because you know you don't rejoice when things happen, you rejoice to make them happen. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. So you don't rejoice just because you feel like no, the Holy Ghost moves you. You have rent, you are writing, trouble, you are writing, no child, you are writing, no job, you are writing no wife you are writing and at the end of it you are dancing and people say ah, i've been hearing a song you say no 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 it's not it. i am dancing because this is what happens knowledge are you hearing what i'm saying now and people look at you and say ah promise would you is it not you that i saw the landlord embarrassing you you claim you are going to church and you can't pay simple forty thousand. the moment you hear don't worry the normal thing is agitation but use intelligence in the spirit you get back and say lord i may not have forty thousand now but i have you i have peace i have joy i may go through embarrassment now but i know that the god i serve the god i serve the god i serve can arise for me they may mock you and say all kinds of things know that a mockery is a sign that satan is already agitated by your success there is something he's seen mockery is a mystery in the spirit it's a sign that your result is appearing already let me tell you hear this hear this if anybody mocks you they gave you a sign that something is already arriving i promise you know this i'm teaching you deep mysteries mockery is a mystery madam are you a man or a woman this is 10 years and you are not married Ooh, start rejoicing don't cry it's a sign that a parcel has left heaven something is coming 
satan can see and so he says look frustrate them men walk by their senses do something frustrate them but those who are spiritual know they get inside the room and start dancing lord you are so good hey you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good you are exalted as a love most high lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good you are exalted as a love most high listen and then everything starts agitating you you go to the place of work they are insulting you you come back for rehearsals they are insulting you don't don't cry if you cry you are not wise you begin to rejoice and you go to satan satan what did you see that is making you restless what have you seen what did you see about my baby that is making because you see the attacks were not like that the attacks are a reaction satan has lived long in this planet he knows we walk by sight but for those who have been able to grow spiritually you don't find their tears you say satan if i will ever cry is to god oh it's not to you job was in a state in his life when nothing was working job was on the ground sat down on the ground and his wife told him he said cause god and die job said why are you talking like one of these stupid women ha god though he slay me though he slay me are we together now job's friends came from everywhere and everybody was talking every kind of nonsense let me tell you one of the worst things that can happen to you is to sit down and allow your life to be a subject of debate from people who are bringing all kinds of useless opinions but you love god why did you have the accident but you love why <coughs> joy joy forever who has killed your joy today i show you that it's an attack over something that is arriving who has killed your joy you prayed about finances your destiny helper is about to come but the devil is wrinkling your face with trouble hey they didn't pay salary i understand i understand i wanted to eat well today now that you cannot eat god you are faithful now you be god almighty god you know me my lord you know now you be God, now you be God, Almighty God, you know be my Lord, you know be my Lord. Now you be God, now you be God, Almighty God, That's how you know be my Lord.
lost his way. This is it. The key to my life and destiny. I can't be too mature to stop believing the word. No, sir. It is the foolishness of man to stop believing God. For anything God cannot do cannot be done. Anything God cannot do cannot be done. No. Can you just blast in tongues for one minute? Hey! Hey! Sera mana na ma sera nenia Lera da di re 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 ma Don't allow the devil shake you Lord of Judah My trust is in you The angels of day My trust is in you. I put them on you. My trust is in you. Say, I put them on you. Say, my trust is in you. And Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Hey, the ancient of days, my trust is in you. You say my trust is in you. I say I, I put them on you. Say my trust is in you. Oh, and Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. The ancient of days, my trust is in you. Oh, I put them on you. Say my trust. Together, everywhere inside and outside and let's begin to pray in the spirit this results we must command it results are commandable those online follow us hold hands with everybody close to you any nation day or night go ahead connect in the spirit inside outside pray one man of faith and power Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to believe the things that I'm teaching you. And I promise you, your life will surprise you. We are going to take some time to pray. That's why I'm stopping here. I just sense that grace to pray. Prayer point number one. I insist that I must succeed. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be quiet. Open your mouth. Everything Adam called. This is my destiny. I have decided to walk with Jesus.
Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to walk with Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Prophesy your desire. I have decided the wisdom to walk with Jesus. Jesus. No turning back. No turning. No turning back. I have decided to walk with Jesus. No turning back. No foolish and ignorant people to laugh at you while you walk the principles of the kingdom though men forsake me still I will follow no turning back no turning, no turning back though men forsake me still I will follow no turning back for obedience to walk the mysteries of the kingdom till they produce for me lift your voice and pray grace 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 to apply the kingdom grace to apply the kingdom the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries for prosperity the mysteries for peace for progress for influence grace, grace, grace you need grace pray in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't think we are rounding up. We have some prayers to do. Listen, I want you to mention the areas of challenge in your life and say, Lord, what mystery, what system in the kingdom are the results of this pain tied to reveal to me? Lift your voice and pray. Mention them. Don't keep quiet. Lord, my growth rate is slow. What is the system in the kingdom that is responsible for speed? I cry for revelation. Are you praying? Are you praying? Lord, I love you. I've seen the anointing on my life, but my finances are dying. Living from hand to mouth, what allocation in the kingdom is responsible for that result? Yeah. 
Sapakato soto pakata. Lord, I love you. I enjoy a healthy prayer life. My prayer life is robust, but there are no helpers in my life. What am I missing? What am I missing? Norman was the captain of the Syrian army, but, but, but he was a valiant man in war. He excelled in an area, but there was an area that was bankrupt. Show me, open my eyes. Open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. Keep praying. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that seeks, finds, and to him that knocks, the door shall be opened. We knock on that door. Jesus, the door, reveal to me. Don't stop praying. La paroto sope kato sheke tene kata Enka na kato sakata kata Shala para kata kaka po shokotos Epre koto soto bakata Matariata so seke tesh Hallelujah Hallelujah Prayer point number three Every door that opened before and then closed must open again no it must open again no lift your voice and cry lord wherever i missed it i asked for mercy but that door must open again you showed me favor once you must show me favor again you gave me victory once you must give me victory again pray you sent me help us once they must appear again My hand has tasted prosperity once. It must come back again. I enjoyed speed before. I cried for restoration. I once was a landlord. Now I'm a tenant. Take me back, oh God. Restore my glory. Restore my honor. Restore my glory. Restore my honor. Restore the anointing. I used to carry the healing anointing once, but it no longer is working. Restore it, oh God. Restore the fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that the grace that is responsible for compelling men to apply the kingdom until they get results may that grace be released on you now may that grace be released on you now may that grace be released on you now in the name of jesus i decree and declare that every area of your life where satan has taken an advantage of by the power that is in the name of jesus i force restoration i force restoration beginning from tonight i declare the mysteries that will bail you out of any trouble you are in it must be revealed to you tonight in the name of jesus and finally i pray for you i will keep praying this until i see it in your life the kind of favor you have never seen may the god i serve make it happen in your life 
I release upon you the ministry of the gift of man. The gift of man. The gift of man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are people here. Please keep standing everyone. There are people standing here. Inside, outside and many online. Who have never truly acknowledged the Lordship of Jesus. And whilst you heard me speak. The Holy Spirit kept speaking to you. That you need a new beginning. For others you have loved Jesus. But things have happened in your life here and there. That require an encounter with God. You need a rededication. Our time is gone. Wherever you are, please, I know there will be people coming from outside. I want to count one to five very quickly. Wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat and boldly come here. Say, Apostle, I want you to pray for me. I'm not ashamed to start afresh with Jesus. Make your way here. Don't wait for someone to come before you come. Be the first. Be bold. Come. God bless you. Appreciate them. They are coming. They need a lot of motivation. God bless you. Those of you coming from outside, wherever you are, make your way quickly. Bless you, my dear. Bless you, my dear. Quickly, come stand. Gentlemen, God bless you. God bless you. Quickly, are you coming? Win that war. Win that war. Make your way to Jesus. Quickly. You sang that you will serve him forever. You sang that you will love him forever. Those coming from outside, double up. Can you run? Quickly. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus make that decision make that decision make that decision let's appreciate them you have one more minute and i'll pray for you one more minute and i'll pray for you are there still people coming from outside clear the way ushers help them so they come quickly clear the way for them god bless you god bless you hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much please join us very quickly thank you my brothers um i appreciate your very bold decision everybody must have a beginning with God a time when you have an encounter with him I want you to mean this sincerely from your heart you're not reciting a poem believe it and the Lord will help you lift your right hand and say this sincerely and passionately say Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I come before you tonight asking you to forgive my sins asking you to cleanse me tonight Jesus is Lord of my heart Lord of my soul Lord of my body I declare that eternal life is mine I am a child of God from today and forever keep your hands lifted Jesus I present to you the ones you died for I decree and declare that the grace that preserves the grace that keeps and the grace that builds be released upon them I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the hand of God is upon you. Let tonight be a new beginning for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Victory unto victory. That's what I speak over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for this decision. Hold on. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. And um, you follow them. They will just have a few words with you. And communicate to you. And you will be back. Let's celebrate them quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.